Hello folks and welcome to today's bumper edition of our game with myself Shane Stapleton joined as ever by Michael Verney and we have got a stellar list, uh, list of guests coming up Joe Dooley, Michael Dignan, James O'Connor, Jimmy Barry Murphy, Jeffrey Linsky You can't say we're, uh, we're short and changing people today and we are brought to you by um, today What's the Score, a great place, live score app there so What's the Score and also Electric Ireland We'll be chatting to some of the lads about their minor moments how much are you hopping and trotting for this weekend, knowing that Offaly are in an All-Ireland Under-20 final? Ah, oh, I can't wait for it. Um, I'm obviously living up in Mead here now, but I can feel the buzz from home almost the last... I can feel the buzz from home since last weekend and even since the, the Leinster final as well. Uh, there's a mad chase for tickets. I believe stand tickets are well gone at this stage, um, which is a fair statement. I'd say there could be the guts of about 45,000 people there on Sunday uh, down in Tom Semple's field. Uh, it should be a belter of a game. We're obviously underdogs going into the game, but... I don't think I don't think that will bother the lads, and they generally always deliver. Um, there's a great buzz around it. I ha I'm covering the game. It's the only way I could get to the game was to actually cover it to be working at it. Um, Elaine is due the day before, uh, so hopefully, hopefully we wait we wait a bit and we get to we get past the game on Sunday. Um, but cannot wait for it. And even like the Electric Ireland minor final as well between. Clare and Galway, which are separated by mere meters, the likes of the likes of Baja and Tubber there are on top of each other, despite being in different different provinces. Uh, that should be a belter of a game as well. So you're telling me not only did you not plan to have a January baby, you also <laughs> could potentially be missing an All Ireland final over. There you go. Yeah, L lack of planning. Um, you always January first, January second, January third. That's really that's the GA baby's age, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Um, I'm going to go through some of the other fixtures that are on this weekend because, look, we're going to be doing an absolute whirlwind of... Uh, five of All-Ireland finals this weekend in Hurling, Shane. Yeah, the Christy Ring Cup final, Derry against me. Then you've got the Nicky Rackard final, which is Donegal against Wicklow. And then the Laurie Maher final, Monaghan against Lancashire. These are all huge fixtures and there's a big Offaly connection in the Laurie Maher, isn't there? There is, yeah. Uh, a couple of lads that, that I know fairly well. Cormac Kenny from my own club in Burr is playing wing back, I think, with Lancashire. He's from my own club, as I said. And uh, Joe Dooley, who we'll have on in a minute, one of club mates of his from Sir Kieran, Connor Kendy will be playing with Lancashire as well. So uh, I know the two boys were the two boys were buzzing once they got to the final. So looking forward to have a little awfully interest in that. Yeah, Michael, how are you doing? Are you, are you well today? Good lad, yeah, not a bother. I'm down in West Clare here for a couple of days holidays, so enjoying oh. the sunshine. Very 25 nice, years later, Michael, you're going down and you're showing our wares after 98. You're dead right. Never never miss an opportunity. I got abused about it last night, believe it or not. I told the, I told the lads it was time to get over. They said no, not yet. <laughs> so it's the same down in Kerry. Like, it's the same down in Kerry over 82. Just some things will never be forgiven or forgotten. Yeah, but you're looking all a bit of crack. I don't think mm. there's anyone taking it too serious. How, how excited are you, uh, Michael, at the moment with, like, you had the Joe McDonough final last weekend, All Ireland under twenty final this weekend. Like it's great days back in Offaly. Jeez, uh, I don't know if I'd say that after the Joe McDonough final, we were mm. very disappointed for maybe twenty four hours. But look, that sport and in fairness, we have made we have made progress. Uh, a couple of years ago, we were in the Christie Ring and and couldn't get out of it. So um, the lads put in a huge effort this year, and you'd have to say, on the day on reflection, Carlo were the better team. You know that little bit better. Uh, the forwards were very, very dangerous throughout. We had a man sent off. We had 26 wides, but at the end of the day, you have to take your chances. So that was disappointing, but, um, and that sport, you have to, uh, I suppose, accept it, take it on the chain and go again. But um, we have this week, obviously, this weekend then to look forward to, which is is massive, uh, as you say. Uh, you know, the minors last year, getting to the final, uh, obviously picked by a point, the John McDonough point as well. Um, we used to win games like that and we are back winning them in fairness. If you look at our matches during the year, we are winning tight matches again, but uh, really looking forward to, to what should be a, a fantastic occasion. And it's kind of come around by accident with the minor double header because obviously the 20s was supposed to be on with the, with the John McDonough final and it couldn't be played because of our, our lads that were, were doubling up. Um, 
So now it's turned into a massive occasion. I was just checking before we came on, there's, there's 25,000 tickets sold already and we're still a few days out. So there's probably going to be over 30,000 there, which is massive. It's incredible for young lads, Mike. Ah, oh, it's an unbelievable experience for them. Um, even the way the structures are changed, I know Claire. This is Claire's uh, in the minor. It's Claire's eighth game. I think it's the same with Galway. Galway were obviously first time in Leinster. They would have traditionally played maybe three, four games to win All Ireland. They're playing probably double that now. The the opportunities for development are the same. Our minors last year, we got a we got a huge amount of games uh, involved as well. I wonder, Michael, just from a chairperson's point of view. Uh, like, uh, what? How much pressures are on? How many? T- how many boxes are you trying to tick over this time? There's so many things that go into getting a team ready for an All Ireland final and making sure everything, you know, every T is crossed and every I dotted. Yeah, look, it. Um, it's not simple. The split season is brilliant in some ways, and look, I think it'll be up for debate at the end of the year. I think we need to maybe stretch it out a bit. I think there's a few things can be done, but we won't get into that now. But just for the last number of months, lads, it's it's mental for every county. You know, it's the same everywhere. But um, one week, I think about five weeks ago, we had eight championship matches in seven days between minor, twenty, and senior, and there's you know there's so much involved, it's particularly in Jewel County. You know, it's it, and we're trying to obviously compete in everything as best we can and our development squad's going as well flat out um so there is a huge amount um happening in the background and it's all about a team of people and working together and making sure you talk to management you make sure that you've that you have everything ticked off that you don't make any mistakes because there is pressure on michael because you don't want to look back after a game and say did we get something wrong that cost us an all ireland or cost us a huge game you know and that is uh, and that's something I suppose that you know we'll say the senior management Colin Cummins the treasure the secretary Derville Dolan the the treasurer Karina is inside now in the office um, working with us every day and lots of other people even on the PR side and everything else that you get it right so it does bring pressure but I suppose you know if you have level headed people there and you know you, I, I mean management and everything there the likes of Leo the likes of Johnny Kelly um, the likes of Mark Murphy with the senior footballers that's what do you need where are we at and um, and and then you know the, the team secretary is very important so there is a huge lot you know you want to make sure obviously to get the tourists that the guard escort is sorted that uh the food is sorted that the, everything they need is sorted and then after the game you know you don't have to be looking too far ahead but you have your meal after the match going back to board actually on sunday evening and then if you win what you do and if you lose what you do you know and, and what what happens then so you want to have it all planned out and, and once you do then and um you know, it's not too bad. You try to relax and enjoy it as best you can. More pressure as a chairperson than as a player. Yes. <laughs> yeah, an awful, an awful lot more. Yeah. Uh, I always said this as a player, you know, and I don't know why it was when I was playing, but I always had an instinct. I always had great respect for the people involved in the background, uh, whether that be um, selectors or managers or kit men or, or county board, you know, that even though we would have had a few clashes up and down uh, as players, which is natural, I think, you know, but um, I was always very aware that there was an awful lot of work going on in the background and really all we had to do was turn up and train and play, you know, which at the end of the day, we love doing. So it wasn't a big sacrifice or it wasn't a big, you know, at times during the winter, you were traveling up and down the country, whatever, but, um, you know, you, you came, you trained and you went home and that's all you thought about, whereas you do have to try to think of so many other things. And, and you're just talking about the county. We obviously have, all our clubs as well and so many things going on in the background and getting ready for club championships in a couple of weeks time and we've league finals on at the minute so that doesn't stop you have to make sure you keep one eye on the overall and it's getting that sort of time to make sure you're still looking at the bigger picture and where you're trying to go and, and to try to meet the meet the targets that you've set and the strategies that we set out for ourselves so it's kind of hard to keep on top of everything and then you're still you're looking forward to next season inter county already because you're looking at you know, management teams again and who's staying and who's going and what might happen and you're trying to start planning for that. So uh, there's a fair bit involved in it, yeah. Michael, like, um, obviously it's the minor and under-20 finals this weekend. I can't wait for going to it myself, but um, what comes to mind when you think of your underage days with Offaly? Which are two two big days, I suppose, really. Winning the minor in 86 uh, was unbelievable. We were, uh, Offaly had never won a Leinster minor. Uh, up to that so we won the Leinster we bet Kilkenny in the first round actually in a replay that year and a little story about myself and Ryan Mannion we were next door neighbours and grew up together started school together and uh, went the whole way up along and Roy ended up full back on that minor team and I ended up full forward and um, as 10 year olds or 11 year olds we had gone to Moon Coyne and Kilkenny on a fela. Uh we were only we were the youngest on the panel and uh 
we went down and stayed in Munkine in Kilkenny and we stayed with the Murphys. There were farmers out, out the country from Munkine. And there was Joe and Tom Murphy and that was, I think that was 1979. So seven years later, we played Kilkenny in the Leinster Minor and Joe and Tom were full back and full forward for Kilkenny and we were full back and full forward for Offaly, which is maybe what the GA is all about, you know what I mean? And uh, it was, uh, I, saw, I always remember remember that year with great fondness and another unusual status was we 12 of the first 15 from two clubs which was which was incredible really there were seven starters from Borough and five from Rhinus which is my club uh, we had two from Lusma and one from KK whereas if you look at the minor team last year there were huge amount of clubs from all over Offaly represented so maybe again uh, sign a change in times and, and demographics and everything else and maybe the, the, the base of you know of hurling changing around the county which is good good and bad I suppose in ways um and then the, I suppose the big one then we went on to 21 and we ended up in our own final against Tip in 89 and the, the beat us in Port Leash. Uh, huge crowd again, that sort of 30,000 crowd. I was captain, Declan Ryan was captain of Tip. They won the senior I learned the week before. John Lahey, Colonel Bonner, uh, George Friend, Liam Sheedy was playing, Mick Ryan, uh, all these lads, Connor Stakelham, and, 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 and of course Dan Quirk. Uh, Dylan's dad and we're thinking Dylan all the time now I was talking to Dan actually during the week there about the foundation but um, Dan scored 3-2 that day actually and uh, uh, it should have been the start of a glorious tip career but I don't think he ever played for them again whatever, whatever he did wrong that day but um, and we had such great players like we had with the Pilkingtons and the Cahills and God rest Adrian no longer with us either and he was he was a minor with four minors started actually John Troy Johnny Dooley Brian Wheel and Adrian Cahill what talents they were you know, along then with Dahi Regan and Declan Pilkington, Billy Dooley, uh, Gary Cahill, Brendan Kelly, Ryan Mannion, myself. Too. So we had a load of county seniors and so had Tip and it was a cracking game. And it's one it took me a long time to get over, I'll be honest with you. Probably the one game that I, I you know, I've, got, I've lost senior learns in Leinster finals, but that game sticks with me, um, That the disappointment of that. And that's probably good, that's healthy, you know, it drives you on. But, so they, they would be, look, we were very lucky. We won three minor, minor learns. That time, uh, I was over age in 87. The lads won it again. They won again in 89. And I suppose it was the, those group of players then that went forward in the 90s and won the Irons. And I suppose that's what we're hoping for again now with these young lads. Did losing, did losing the, the 21s work in a positive way in one sense, Michael? Like, you know, the lads are going for no off team as well. Everyone at 21 or under 20 All-Ireland, the lads are trying to change that. And so it's mad to think like the Whelans and the Pilkingtons and all the other lads, none of them have an, an under 20 or 21 all Ireland. The lads can kind of change that on Sunday. But did that drive you on in a way to, to go and win senior? If you look at Waterford, it'd be Offaly in 92. Everyone probably would have tipped them to win an all Ireland. And Offaly got two in the 90s and they got none and even into the noughties as well. I think there was probably two things. I I, I think that, um, like some of our lads, John Troy and Brian Whelan and the boys, they lost. 321 I learned, you know, yeah. which was massive. Yeah. Whatever was my disappointment, I can imagine how the lads felt. But I think that was definitely a factor. And probably that we had a few teams that we could pick out of as well. You know what I mean? It wasn't just the one team. We picked up a few off 86, a few off 87, uh, a few off 89. Um, but I, I think it was a big thing. And the 80s team was kind of finishing up in the late 90s, then a lot of the, uh, a lot of, sorry, the the. 81, 85 team in the late 80s were starting to finish up into the early 90s. So, like, we had lots more disappointment, Michael, after that. We won a league in 91, the only league we ever won. But we got beaten in the first round of the championship in 91 by Dublin. We got beaten by Kilkenny in 92 and 93 in the first round. And it was knockout that time. So we had three years in a row where we got one championship match uh, before we won the Ireland in 94. So, so there was plenty of time for reflection. And maybe, you know, it did drive us on, but it was probably panic setting in as well at that stage that all this underage, where was it going to lead to? And um, so we were lucky enough to get over the line then and then for the next probably six or seven years compete and probably compete very close to the top uh, right throughout that time. Just on a quick point you made there about, you know, everyone saying now, you know, it's Cork shouldn't be gone out of the championship. You know, it's too early for Cork to be gone out of the championship or it's too early for uh, whoever to be gone out of the championship, Wexford or whoever. Like, yeah, it was way more cutthroat back then. And, you know, you can say whatever you like and Cork are a brilliant team and not having a go at them or anything like that. But they had four games to get through and they didn't get through so like just if anything it was a fair bit more harsher back in the day well it was and, and I think on that point I think this is a particularly cruel year if you like in, th in terms of the way the results win with teams in Munster being so close with draws and losing by a point and winning by a point like if teams were beating 8 or 10 points there'd be no one having this argument and if you didn't have the, 
at some stage have a knockout element. It would affect your crowds, it would affect the performances, it would affect, affect the teams. Like you wouldn't have games like we've had over the last number of weeks. So I, I don't, I think that's just, in fairness, just pure disappointment that the way it, it happened, you know, that, uh, you know, tip hung on by one point. And uh, I actually met Noel McGrath yesterday in La Hinge and we were chatting about it. And, you know, they played very well all summer and they could have been gone. We were just chatting about yeah. it, how close yeah. they were. So I think it's a particularly unusual year. It was more cutthroat. You have to get more time. I think there's ways you could do that if we, if we, I think there are ways of spreading it out. I'm not sure about the Joe McDonough teams and we're there ourselves, you know, being st- I think if you win the Joe McDonough, that's your All-Ireland final. You're happy enough to to roll on for next year, you know, into the Leinster Championship. And and you could have that final in two or three weeks' time. We could have created more space. You might have had a second versus third semi-final. And then if you didn't have the preliminary quarterfinals, you might have more time than for your Leinster and Munster Championships as well. So I think that, because going, what we did this year, nine matches in 10 weeks, and we're a small county, small pick, picked up serious injuries. I'm not saying it was because of that. You could get injuries any day of the week, but... Um, you know, it's just too intense for amateurs to be at that. So I think there's, I think there's a, there is scope there to 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 allow maybe another two or three weeks there without without actually going on that much longer and still leaving plenty of time for your club. And Michael, you've uh, you've obviously drawn Tipperary then in the preliminary All Ireland quarter final. <laughs> Not only you were saying before you've relations in Tipperary, but uh, Brendan Maher and Martin Maher are of course part of the backroom team with Johnny Kelly, who knows Tipperary hurling very well. So are we smelling an ambush? <laughs> Well, I hope so, but uh, look, it's unlikely, lads. You know, the gap is big there, and we're, we're, you know, we know what it is. To, we know what we have to do to close it, and the lads are realistic. Um, but look, now that we're there, and the lads are back training tonight, they've had a few days off, well deserved. They're back training tonight. Of course, we're going to prepare for it, and of course, we're going to enjoy it and get as much as we can out of it. Um, I have to say, the lads are, they're f- phenomenal fellas. The two Mars, um, they've been a huge addition uh, to Offley. Uh, along with, uh, with with obviously Johnny Gollum and Colin Callan is there as well and you know um, it's great the experience the lads bring but they're f- genuinely as you know Shane they're such sound fellas like and not just in terms of hurling but in life experiences and in terms of the type of people they are like our lads I think have come on so much as as young men uh, because of the impact that those lads have had on them because you can see the spirit in the group is, is way way stronger than it was Um albeit, as I said, we were beaten. And we, we know we need an awful lot more work to We have to get a lot more players through. But certainly, the, the lads have been a huge positive. And look, it'll, it'll, add, a bit of cra- it'll add a bit of spice and a bit of crack. And uh, I'm hoping the crowds turn out as well. And that's a big occasion in, in O'Connor Park in a couple of weeks' time. Did you get the two Mahers playing a bit of music yet? They're fair old musicians. I couldn't breach client confidentiality like that, um, <laughs> but there might have been there might have been a bit there might have been a few beers after the John McDonough. Uh, I wasn't in the presence on the Monday evening, but I think um, I had a couple of beers with the lads Sunday night. But I let them off then Monday, and I think the the guitars were out all right. And that was a, that was the first time that was the first time because like in fairness, like, lads, this is another side of it. Uh, and I have a young fellow on the te- on the team myself or on the panel and and. Like the effort the lads put in is unbelievable. The, the, from Christmas until the day of the down match, where they had actually a week break, the, the lads the lads hadn't gone out once. You know, it's unbelievable the the commitment and uh, and we couldn't say that about uh, back in our day. I don't think <laughs> there's probably any that's, need an, for under, that's an under that's an understatement, Mike. Now I'd say to be honest. Yeah, yeah, we would we would have had a few points, but I know in fairness that's not coming from management or that's not coming from there's no there's no drink bans and there's no there's probably is a couple of lads having odd pint here and there, but as a general rule, the lads they just don't they don't bother that it's not part of their psyche or what they're doing and the build up. So they, they, I know they really enjoyed the last couple of days and in each other's company. And I think like that is fierce important in terms of developing that bond and that team spirit. And when you get down to the last five minutes in big matches and you have to win them and get over the line, having that sort of unbreakable friendship that you have from off the field and we have that and I know Joe is coming on shortly we like we might never meet up only once every we have 25 years this year there's some of the lads I would hardly have seen the 25 years but I know when we go away we meet up and I learned that we go away in October for a week's holidays it comes back in two seconds and uh, and it stays with you all your life so I think that's that's fierce important winning and losing winning is obviously hugely important but there's a lot more to playing the game. When you're putting so much into it, you have to be getting more out of it than just the highs of winning and the lows of losing. Just on that as well, I actually don't drink at all, but I, I like going out and I actually see, I think I see the benefit of a team and a squad going out together nearly more than anybody else. Like I think those nights are invaluable for you know a couple of weeks' time when they play a tip, but the year after and the year after, like it's that crack with it. It's like talking about whoever made a fool of himself or whoever, you know, that's, that's what keeps us going in the dressing room. And, you know, someone get someone develops a nickname on the back of something they did 
when they had a few scoops on board and it sticks maybe for the rest of their life as well. That's to me, like that's such an important part of hurling, such an important part of sport. Well, it is because and you, you know this and I know this, you have so many different personalities in a setup. And if you're only meeting for training and going out and training and going home, you only see a certain aspect of somebody's personality. But in the bigger picture, then when you see them and we were so lucky to go on, you know, so many brilliant team holidays. Like we traveled the world. We went to America. We went to Cape Town. We went to to, to Thailand, the Canaries a couple of times. Like we, so you really get to know the people and their family. You know, their wives, their girlfriends, all that, which forms the bigger picture. And it it is it is huge. It is hugely important. And and you know, because some lads can be very intense or, or around trend, or you only see you can see a, maybe not. A, a nasty enough side of them. It depends, and that's what you want. You know what I mean. When you go training in them, we were very, we were very, very competitive group uh, when we went to the field. Uh, like everything was left. The joking was left behind. Okay, we had a bit of crack in the dressing room, but then, as you say, you get to know, and it allows you then a little bit. I think a little bit more forgiveness around certain things that happened. Then uh, you know, here and there over a journey of, which like I was there for nearly fifteen years. So you, you, you know, you really want to be close to people because they become your family and. Uh, to become closer in many ways because you spend so much time together. Are you like, what's it like, Michael, being an underage player and having 30,000 coming to games, like you mentioned earlier with the, the under 21 final that you had uh, all, the, all the way back? Like these young lads, they're getting crowds that are far in excess of the senior team at the moment. It, it, it's so strange, isn't it? It is, but I, I, and I don't know the plate. Like, Offaly brought, I think, 14,000 to Nolan Park last year, and I'd imagine. There's going to be fifteen or sixteen thousand from Offaly at this because there, I think there's more kids. At, uh, the Offaly jerseys are everywhere, and Michael can testify for that. It's yeah. it's unbelievable. And just something out last, I, I come back to that in a second. But uh, I'm a long time going to Crow Park, commentating and playing and everything. And I'm, I always watch the minor matches. I always watch this, but I always watch the young lads playing at half time. The national schools, and the national school team from Offaly last Saturday. I don't know if you noticed, Michael, at half time, they were unbelievable. I don't think I've ever seen a better team at half time. Their field and their athleticism, their, their left and right, their teamwork was just unbelievable. So I hope that's a good sign for the future. But it was, <laughs> it, it was really at a very high level. I was in at a few coming to Munster School finals last week. There is a huge interest, but that can only be done by the type of player that we have. And the, the, the young lads that we have, we have a very, very young team, as you know. We have 27 in the squad next year, uh, 14 the year after. And you're not putting pressure on these lads now because they have, but like the Adam Screenies and the Dan Ravens that are, that are the younger lads, it's not just about them, your Charlie Mitchells, your leaders, your Joe Hockters, your Mark Tries in the goals and Sam Burke and, and the lads in between, the Dan Burks. There's so many exciting talents. And the one thing is, and this is all awfully people ever wanted, is that when you go out in the field that you give it everything you have. And whatever happens at the end of the day, and play with a bit of flair and a bit of style and a bit of panache and go for it. And that's what these lads do. And So that's from our point of view, Shane, this team, I suppose we've been so long waiting for these type of players to come again that the public have just fallen in love with them, really. And they're bringing massive crowds. Like, you know, we, we, we do well to get a couple of thousand to our senior foot, three or four thousand to our senior footballers or hurlers championship matches. But these lads can bring 15, 16,000. And that's a credit to them. Uh, I'd like to see the, the supporters going in the same numbers to all the other matches, but that'll come in time. That'll come in time. I understand that. that not, and you can't. And there's a cost involved and there's families involved and there's jerseys and there's everything. But they have caught the imagination. And um, and, I, and I think, you know, Clare are another county that you can see rising very rapidly over the last couple of years in terms of their, their underage. They're in a lot of finals. They're producing a lot of players. They've lads going into Limerick to school uh, as well and Harty Cup teams. And they're putting huge work in. Galway have always had it. Galway's, Galway have different challenges, I think, in terms of trying to They've so many underage players, and Cork now have it over. If Cork wins Sunday, it's three twenties in four years, isn't it? Twenty ones. Yeah. So who are who are the best players when you have so many? That brings a different challenge. Whereas um, we've always had to benefit from get as many as we can off any successful team. Go back to the '64 minor football team. Seven of them won senior Leonard's in '71. The Martin Furlans and Willie Bryans and Tony McTaggs and Eugene Mulligans of this world. They all came off that team. So we've always sort of harvested as many as we could off successful underage teams. And in ways, it's easier when there's not another 20 coming the year after and 20 the year after because it's very hard to decide who's who then at that stage. Mm. Seeing as you brought it up, Michael, there's a, a famous awfully name running in the 530 at Ferry House today by a horse by the name of Matt Connor. And as, as someone who has an interest in you know, a few hairs in his tail. I wouldn't put you off back in a metre to kick off a good weekend for Offaly GA. That's just a bye-to-bye, all right? That's how we backed him the last day, did you? 
Oh, yeah. God, they did. God, they did. Shane, I'll tell you the story. Shane, I'll tell him where we watched that. We were driving down. Was that the day we were driving down to Rowan yeah. Moore? We were doing a live show down in Rowan Moore, and uh, I never knew anything about the horse. And he said, sure, come on, we'll pull in here to Kill Cullen or Kill yeah, Cullen, yeah, somewhere yeah. like that. So we pulled in. I'd never bet on anything ever. I said, I'll check the wallet. And you're the way you'd never have cash these days. I happened to have 25 quid. And I said, you know what? Go for it. In she came. It was a five to one. Five to one. And I'd say you have five two or three broken ribs to show for as yeah, well. Because I yeah, peed yeah. once across the finish line. <laughs> and the horse was coming down. Like I was watching it half paying attention. I'm not that interested in it. But then all of a sudden he was getting so stressed out that it was making me stressed out watching him. And then it, it came in first, barely held on. And he hit me a dig in the ribs. <laughs> so the light Qu- didn't hit him hard it. enough. That's all I, I didn't, know. You didn't hit him. Yeah, well, I do t- always have a bit of cash in. Just don't be. T- t- no, cash is king. And uh, no, I, I was a. Uh, yeah, he had a couple of runs under his belt, and he won that day. And I was we. we it, it, he was fancy. I put it that way. So. Um, <laughs> and Matt, Matt never backs a horse either, but he he was on that day as well. So once Matt was on, we were all on. I can tell you that. So, there you no, go. There you go. Great, great day. I saw you did a column this week about basically there's more to Hurland than the Munster Championship. I totally agree with you. Like in many ways, I'd rather we got rid of all the provincials or else put the two provincials together after they play the round of games and then finish it out so that everyone plays everybody. Maybe just get rid of the league. I mean, do you know what I mean? Ultimately, what sport in the world spends half its time playing friendlies? That would be my opinion on it. And like you were saying, maybe let it last a little bit longer into the year. But like, like, the Munster is great, but, like, I love to see Tip against Kilkenny this year, against Galway, against, you know, whoever, Wexford. I think it's a waste. What other sport? Like, would the Premiership go three or four years without seeing Man City against Liverpool? I think that's nuts. Yeah, well, it is, but um, is it going to change? Highly unlikely, because take a long look, time. Like, it will take a long time. Because, And I think the Munster Championship is the... I was only um, maybe creating debate, a little bit of debate around that and a bit, you know, being a Leinster man, we are, we've always had this thing about Leinster and Munster and Hurling. Munster is obviously, the results speak for themselves over the last number of years with Limerick and, and Tip being the only ones there that, that have come in there over the last five years. Um, but um, Leinster is, I suppose, you know, even if you look at the minor this year, Leinster, Galway came into Leinster, you know, it seems to be, we, whatever whatever changes we want to make, we'll make them in Leinster. That that was kind of my over overarching view about that. Mm. And not that I think anybody in Leinster has a massive problem with that. It certainly has made, you know, I think Galway coming into Leinster has been good for Leinster, you know, because it was uh, it, it was dying on his feet a little bit. So no, no problem with that. But I, I thought it was a strange one at underage level because letting in Galway minors who are very, very strong every year, uh, whereas when you're trying to build in and off this world or if Galair were coming or anyone were coming it's hard enough with Kilkenny and Wexford in Dublin without having Galway in on top of you as well so I, I would have thought that maybe the place for Galway minors was in Munster um, uh, as well and uh, so it'd be just things like that but I don't think look I think you, you, you could if you could get the blessing of all the councils uh, Ulster and Munster and Connacht and, 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 and Leinster Council um, you could have you know really brilliant championships in terms of that crossover you're talking about but I think it's unlikely that it's going to happen in the short term anyway. It's yeah. gas, Michael. This man here is talking now. Shane was talking about both sides of his mouth because on Monday's show, Niall Moran was on and the two boys couldn't have been in any more agreement that a Munster medal is worth more than an All-Ireland medal. So, I mostly I, agreed I, to wind you up. To <laughs> <laughs> have you ever heard um, the like of that? Niall Moore, I was only starting the pot now, in fairness, yeah. but it, it fairly created debate. The boys were like, ah, sure, it's only a cod of a championship year out there in Leinster. I'd nearly place more value on a Munster medal than an All-Ireland medal. Jesus Christ. Well, I, I, but I do think the Munster medal this year is big for Clare. You know, I think it's very, yeah. very big for Clare. I think it's very big for Clare, and it'd be very big for Brian Law. Like what a job he's done, and he, like to come up, like the, they, they've their performance against Limerick over the last number of years. Like I know this year, everybody seems to be coming back to Limerick, but Clare have been rattling them for a couple of years now. You know, and whatever it is, I know that like the, again the rivalry, like which which the GA is based on. That's why all this is brilliant. All this. Uh, whether it's stirring debate or having debate, or and you can change your mind between Monday and Friday as well. That's, that's a lot. Of that, Joe Brawley, Pat always did it, so oh, yeah, you didn't yeah, do the show. <laughs> when, you're in the, when, when you're in the media, especially now when you're being taped, you can't you can't pretend you, you didn't say it. But um, yeah, so um, no, no, I think I do think the monster is huge, and there is um, I think Claire would love to go that route and put Limerick back into the into the pack again and give them more matches, you know, because um, like they are hanging in there, but. What a team they are! Like they, they, they're still they're still getting it done. Michael, like as you mentioned, they're being filmed and all that of the Sunday game crew over the years. And I'm thinking Gerlach, Dan, Joe Brawley, Pat's Bland. 
Who's the who's the most sort of crack or biggest wind up merchant or you know just a bit of a devil in him? Jesus, there's a, that's a good question. Look, look, Nan and Brawley would have to be um, the two, uh, and obviously, um, like I. I love I love Gerald Nan when he was on, and you know he's totally fearless, like, and he didn't care who he was talking about, what he was talking about. Um, very intelligent guy. A lot of it, I'd say, he didn't really believe himself, but he stirred it up. He knew he was there to entertain. He had an opinion on everything under the sun, and he was he was dynamite. Now I have to say, to work with. No, I uh, I love working with Tomas and Cyril. Different personalities. I I, I suppose I I've evolved over the years. I went from daytime to a mixture of nighttime and daytime into the sort of, I was doing the different bits with the co-com. Now, obviously, someone decided to have a face for radio, so I'm gone off the screen. It's just co cam only now, which is a different thing again. It nearly is more pressurised because it's happening. You don't have time to reflect. You know, if you're watching a half a hurling and you're on at half time or on that night, you have lots of time to reflect on what's happened and form an opinion. But when it's happening in front of you, you have to call it. So, uh, But I'd have to say, look, Nan, and then broadly, like, even in the production meetings, uh, over the years for the nighttime program, the, like taking over the hurling chat, taking the, like, telling the hurling lads what to say about the hurling, but having a huge genuine interest in it as well, you know. Um, but totally off the wall and mighty crack like. And uh, and the, the only night of the year I used to really stay up was after the All Ireland hurling final. I used to love going for a few pints with with Gerald McNan. He wasn't a big drinking man either, but he loved staying up as well. And that night, you could, depending on over the years, there have been different lads that could from from Dalo to you know to. Liam Sheedy in more modern times and Henry and, and uh, Don Logue and different lads over the years. Generally that night after, we used to all go in and do the nighttime show one time. I don't know if you remember that for a number of years. Yeah, yeah. Whether we were on day or night job and different night time. So that was always a great night and a great bit of crack. And, uh, and you know, some of that is lost by this. I know that was very personality driven, um, maybe a lot of it, but but like I, I love the fearlessness of Lucknan as a manager. I know some of the stuff he did was totally nuts and off the wall, but... Uh, he got clear there, lads, after such a break and he made them believe in themselves and then he he still believed in himself and he wasn't afraid to write it, he wasn't afraid, afraid to say it. So I'd say he was he was the man that I sort of enjoyed the most because you didn't know what was going to happen next. Mm. And this game on Sunday then, like this core team has some serious athletes like Ben Cunningham, brilliant player, especially the last day out against Clare, Ben O'Connor. This could be, like some people are saying his last underage game, maybe rugby is going to take over now, but like, they're serious quality hurlers. Michael Mullins with that unbelievable goal when he ran from midfield the last day. Great, great players on both sides. It's a very fascinating game, Michael. It is, it is. I watched, um, and look, uh, again, compliments to TG Carr. What a service to provide for the underage. So, you know, I, when I'm not gone to off-day matches, uh, we either taped them or watch them live if we can, the, the minors. And so I have, I've seen the minors playing, but the, on, in terms of the 20s, I've seen Cork's last two matches, obviously, the, the Limerick and Clare match, and they're a super side. Um, I think it, it, the lads are special that you've talked about there. Like uh, Mickey, Mick, Mickey Mullins uh, played against us in 86 in the minor final. He actually played on both minor teams that year. Galway bet them in the minor football. That would have been Alan Mulholland's time and these lads bet them in the minor football and uh, we bet them in the minor hurling. So that was a tough year for for, he, for his dad. Um, but he's a, he's a super athlete. Ben Cunningham, as you said, the, the two wing forwards are lightning and they're full forward. Um, but I think it's the no weaknesses and these couple of subs that they bring on very early, uh, the two corner forwards are in up in the forwards. Uh, they're off last year's minor team. They're superb players as well. So, I think it's a huge ask for Offaly. Um, but I I think the way the lads are approaching is they're 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 going to go there and give it everything that they have. And you know, I think Cork are one to five, and the bookies are never that far wrong. Uh, you would say, but I'm expecting a big performance from Offaly. Whether it'll be good enough or not, we we don't know. We'll will depend on on the day, but. The one thing about this team is that they, they do turn up and they always perform and they stick in matches and they stay in matches. And, um, you know, it's been a peculiar championship. They started off in the sort of, in the so-called weaker group and they progressed through it. And I think winning the Leinster College this year will have a big bearing on the lads as well, playing against that Kieran's team. I know people are saying it's a combined Offaly team, but the Kieran's team, I think, was pulling for about 16 clubs on their first 36. So uh, way bigger pick than, say, we would even have an Offaly. Uh, so... I think that's a great experience this year for them as well. And obviously last year's minor and beating Galway and and uh, Dublin and Wexford in the last three matches is going to give them that bit of confidence. So I don't don't think it's as big a foregone conclusion as it looks on paper, or maybe as a lot of people think. I I, I, I certainly wouldn't be writing off this Offaly team. Hmm. Well, Michael, you've been brilliant with your time. I can't keep you much longer. So thank you very much for coming on and hopefully you enjoy the match on Sunday. Hopefully it's a good day for all the Offaly heads. Yeah, please, God. Thanks, lads. Talk to you then. Bye-bye. Cheers, Mike.
Okay, brilliant to have Michael on there. What, what are your thoughts? Like, hopefully Joe Dooley will come on there soon enough. But um, what are your thoughts on this uh, under-20 final? Are you buzzing for it? Who's going to do the job for Offaly? Yeah, well, Cork are definitely, uh, they're fairly overwhelming favourites, you know, but, you know, with the odds compilers or whatever, but, you know, realistically, look at the size profile of their players. Look at, you know, the likes of Ben O'Connor, uh, Ben Cunningham, these guys, they're nearly fully grown men and they're probably guys that would make a big impact at senior level. You probably wouldn't be saying the same about some of our lads at the moment. Like, as you know, as good as Adam Screeny is, it will take a few years before he comes to senior level. Mm -hmm. um, it's hugely exciting whenever whenever that does happen. Um, and even the likes of Dan Ravel and that, it will take a couple of years for those kind of guys to come through. But uh, I'd have huge faith in this team. And one thing Michael said there, these lads always deliver. You know, even when they were beaten by Tipperary in the All-Ireland final last year, they delivered. They yeah. probably just maybe retreated behind the ball, uh, maybe and tried to kind of soak up some tip, some tip pressure at the end. But they always deliver. They always perform at college's level, at minor level, at under-20 level. Um, it's probably a surprise and a bit of a bonus that this team probably has gotten as far as they, they have got. But like once you get to an All Ireland final, like nothing's a bonus. You're you're trying to get silverware on the board realistically. And this crop of lads, even though despite you know they're being uh, you know mid mid twenties around of the amount of them available next year, like you're not guaranteed of anything. Like Galway could have a you know a crack under twenty team next year, and we could be knocked out in a quarter final or a semi final. So you take the opportunity, try and take the opportunity that's in front of you with both hands, and I'm sure these lads will. And I'm just looking forward to seeing, I'm just looking forward to seeing Screeny again. Uh, look for the likes of Breck and Kavanagh be another player I have massive, massive time for. Um, and it's just a really nice team to watch. I just think they're different animals when it comes to mentality and always deliver no matter what day it is and if you look at it uh, as Leo O'Connor said a couple of weeks ago you know already this year some of these lads have won the vast majority of them have won Leinster Colleges A Leinster Colleges B All-Ireland Colleges B Leinster under 20 Leinster minor last year like that's a fair pedigree to be bringing through to this big stage uh, and as you mentioned earlier the exposure of you know playing in front of however many people it's going to be Sunday like, what that, does that do for you for the next time? And when they get to play in Crow Park, whenever that is. And uh, there's a man now, I hope he's on media duty because on the, on the day for the Munster final, because I believe they're already sold out, Jamesy. In 20 minutes? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever heard the like? It was like an Ed Sheeran concert. No, yeah. But I mean, obviously anybody that was in, in, in the Gaelic Crowns, um, you know, earlier this year or was in Turles last year, um, is expecting, you know, that more of the same in value for money. Um, and what, listen, there's just... The games between them have just been electric um, over the last couple of years. So, yeah, I think look at a lot of people obviously surprised maybe the decision not to go to Cork. Clare obviously wanted the game in Turles. Uh, but like when people in Six Mile Bridge or Cratler or Clannera talk about going to town, it's not Ennis. It's, it's Limerick they're referring to. It's only in the road. It's even for people from West Clare, you know, East Clare, it's it's just more accessible. Um, something that obviously Cork Cork wouldn't have been, uh, especially with both counties probably pretty much travelling the same direction. So, um, I I think look a fair play to Brian Lohan. Um, you know I think they're they're that was their preferred venue if they couldn't go to Turles, uh, they didn't want to go to Cork, and um, they've shown a, a certain level of belief in themselves. Um, and I suppose maybe putting a little bit of pressure in a weird kind of way, maybe back on Limerick. Uh, at home, but uh, look, I was in the Gaelic grounds last Sunday, lads, and it was electric. Um, forty thousand, no problem accommodating the crowd, and if the atmosphere in the Munster final is anything like like it was at the weekend, uh, you know we're we're in for another great day. Mm. Do you get any sense, Jamesy, that um, that this Limerick team is on the edge in terms of like they're about to hit the next level and go back to their usual form in the last few years, or that they're teetering on the edge of maybe they got a big performance the other day against Cork, who were closer to them than recent years? But they still could be teetering on the edge a little bit because it felt a week ago that you know they were there to be got. It's hard to say, Shane. I mean, like you, you look at the former Galan, for example. Uh, you know, Flanagan. Do, do, those guys, if Anthony are playing better now than they were than they were a month ago, Dimmer Burns, Kyle Hayes. Uh, I, I think if anything, they're they're starting to, to to motor and find their rhythm um, more so than than arguably they you know was the case against Watford or against Clare earlier on. So. I mean, from a clear perspective, I think even the players were probably psychologically readying themselves for tip, um, you know, in in the Munster final. And it's it's a major refocus to have the Jolly G and Green Giants coming down the track again. And 
you know, it's it's the, like I I wouldn't say despondency is the right word to describe it, but a lot of Clare supporters I think were thinking, um, no, we don't want to be facing that crowd again, especially in a in a game that isn't necessarily a knockout, where even if you did beat them, you know, you might run into them down the line down the line again. So, uh, I, I don't get any sense that Limerick are are finished. I mean, anybody that was doubting their hunger or their appetite just to see the way they had to go to the well last weekend and Hagerty after Cork brought it back to a point. You know, got a great score, fist pumped to the crowd. And they're still celebrating the turnovers as much as they are, you know what I mean, the the, the big scores in the in the game. So yeah, look at they, they to me look like they're hungry, everybody's hungry as they were. Um oh, have we lost them? They're not the break chain. Yeah. You, you know, I I think they're look at if anything, they're they're in a great place because it, it looks like they've turned maybe a corner. And Jamesy, what what are Clare going to do with the full back spot having lost Conor Cleary? What looks to be gone for the summer? Yeah, it's a huge. He's a huge loss, lads, because he matches up really well with Glenn. Obviously, he's physically strong. He's experienced. He's, you know, he's he's a proper full back. Uh, and we arguably don't have a ready made replacement. And I'd say if you look back over the league games over the last two years, Conor Cleary, I think, has played every one of them. Um, now Adam Hogan is probably the long term solution there but Adam is still under 20 physically you know is he capable of handling Galan or manhandling Galan or Flanagan as, <laughs> as you maybe have to do in there you know I, I'm not so sure I mean you know Shane Amore obviously and, and Paul Flanagan are the two guys that would come in maybe as cornerbacks but you know those limit guys ask a different set of questions especially in two man full forward line so I'm sure Brian I mean he has the option of putting David McInerney back there but you're robbing Peter to play to pay Paul because McInerney has been outstanding on the wing, you know, brilliant going forward, um, and he matches up really well with Hagerty, um, outside. So, yeah, I mean, look at at least they've had time to to kind of, I suppose, weigh it up and and look at a few things in in, in training. I, I I'm not sure exactly what the position on Connor is. I mean, clearly he's as tough as they come, and maybe he's harboring hopes that he might play some part. I I, I don't know, and I haven't been talking to anybody close to the setup but uh yeah that's the, that's the that's the biggest call that Brian and, and the care management have to make because obviously you know Limerick looked like the weekend like they could get goals um they could they could have had five or six goals seven goals as in terms of the chances that they created at the weekend and um you know and the way Clare have played them they've gone man to man um you know you're going to be on an island inside in that full back line with loads of space in front of you and Brian is backing these guys to, to, to survive. So it's a big, big call to make. I think Rory Hayes didn't play well at all last year in the Munster final. And I think, you know, Rory will be particularly disappointed, I think, at, at the way that went and looking maybe to, to atone for that. Um, so he'd be one of the two in there, I'd imagine. But who the second guy is going to be, Adam Hogan maybe, but David McInerney is probably a, a, a live option as well. Limerick are going to go after the full back line as well. Even looking at the game the last day, they fed the full forward line probably more than they had at any stage yet this season. It was a lot more, I'd say, a lot more direct, maybe a lot less triangle passing out around the middle. They were trying to get that direct ball in. Whoever is in there, I'd say they're they're going to they're going to try and hammer them from the start. Yeah, and, and Michael, I, I was down there and like to see the space in front of. I mean, the Limerick half forwards were way out the field, and Joyce, you sensed, kind of wanted to try to sit, but you know he couldn't either because Carl O'Neill was getting on was getting on ball. They threw in Tom Morris, he sent the forward at one at one point. So, yeah, I mean, there was an ocean of space, um, you know, in the cork in the cork half of the field, and like it's not easy to play, and especially if they get time at all to get the heads up and pick out that diagonal ball. And Galan, like obviously he's. You know, you're playing from behind, he beats you out in front, you're trying to get out in front, and then he's lethal coming late to the ball from behind. I mean, the one he grabbed over Sean O'Donnell, who said probably played the hurley, but yeah, you know, referees are, are, are maybe you know they're slow to pull it. And so, he's yeah, he's a real threat, and he definitely is. You get the sense that when he's playing with that swagger and that bit of confidence and that maybe even bit of arrogance, um, that Limerick are a better, more potent, the dangerous side, and yeah, you'd imagine, um that Limerick would have looked at this and said, right, if we if we can go for the juggler early on and expose any kinks that might be in that careful back line, they'll, they'll be looking to, that's exactly what they'll be looking to do. Just on Clare, Jamesy, um, I was chatting to Sarah Lyons the other day, your former manager, obviously, and, and former teammate, and he just said, the only thing that's missing in Clare now is silverware, basically. Um, is there a big need to get over the line in the provincial final and, 
Um, I think Davy took a little veiled swipe at, at Brian Lohan when he when he said about um, there are managers in certain jobs three or four years that haven't won anything. And what was that about? Is there a pressure now to go and get silverware as good as the performances have been and they've really thrown it down to Limerick? Uh, and as good as the atmosphere seems to be in the county and the vibe around the county, is there a tangible need to get something in their hands now? Well, I'd say from the players' perspective, I mean, at the end of the day, that that you you know you want silver. That's why you play the games. We haven't won the monster title since ninety eight. That's that's twenty five years. It's a long time. It's still a, very much a, a treasured prize in the Providence. You you know you only have to look at the way the counties went out of this year to, to appreciate that. So, I mean, I don't think I like look look from my perspective, Michael. The job is Brian Lohan's for as long as he wants it because he is getting the very very best out of what he has. It's a very happy United camp. Has been, I think, from kind of day one. Um, he's a player's man. The players have massive, obviously, respect for him, and the county has massive respect for him. And you know, Cyril probably alluded to the feel good vibe that's around the place. You know, with really good guys in with the twenty ones, Terence Fahey, Brendan Bugler, those guys. Obviously, the minor management, Bach, Brian O'Connell, Don Maloney. Um, you know, Cyril was with them last year. Good people do, and th- and that work is is has been done at 14, 15, 16, right through the the, the other development squads as well. And there's a real sense of, I think, optimism. Um, you know, about the future now in Clare that, you know, they're good people and we're doing the work. Um and I think I think look at supporters would feel that look at these players, given what they've they've put into it and given what they've given over the last um, you know, three, four, five, and some of them longer, that they, you know, they deserve some silverware now. But you've got to go and earn it. And this is a Limerick team that's going for five monster titles in a row, you know, four in a row. Arguably now, again, with Kenny in their sights. In terms of the 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 prize of who the greatest team was of, of all time, so it's not going to be easy. Um, but I don't think, as I said, that the the Brian is in any danger. There's nothing like that. The players, obviously, for themselves, you know, you'd love to see them, um, you know, seeing some rewards for the effort that the efforts and the energy that they put into it. Just on yeah. that, Tony Kelly has no monster medal. Like, do you know what I mean? Which is, just seems kind of mad. If you, get, you know what I mean? For a player of his, his stature and what he's done in the game, you know. Yeah, no, and 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 I mean, whatever whatever Brian Lohan has done, I mean, like whatever buttons he's pressed, like the, the Tony Kelly we've seen in the last four years, um, you know, since Brian took over has been magical, and you know, I think Tony's career, you know, would have been very unfulfilled, leave with the All Ireland Medal and the Hurler of the Year Award and the league, and all, you know, if he hadn't. I think rediscovered his form and rediscovered, you know, what he's capable of. And, you know, he's been look at he's a joy to watch lads. He's he just plays with that that, you know, freedom and that land and that style and that class. Um and obviously he's hugely important to us in terms of, you know, him watering well. Um, you know, the team seems to go better. And he, and obviously look at he's he's been a real torn in Limerick side and you just you just wonder at some point are Kinerk and Kylie gonna, you know, ad, change up what they do. Um, in terms of getting a handle on him, because he's wreaked a good bit of havoc against Limerick. Um, you know, if you look at over the, you know, the last the last three or four three or four years. So, yeah, um, Tony in in fine form and and going to need to produce another big performance if we're going to get over the line, obviously. Yeah, Jamesy, it's you mentioned there twenty five years since uh, Clare last won Munster. That was the long hot summer in nineteen ninety eight. When you look back at it now and the the high court and the you know, all that was being covered on TV and all this kind of stuff and the sit-down protest that those awfully scumbags did. Like, it, 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 it was a crazy old summer. Crazy, Shane. I mean, fact is stranger to fiction. I mean, if you wrote that in a, in a book, people wouldn't believe it. Wouldn't believe it. Um, but look, it was it was a brilliant summer in, in, in many respects. Um, I suppose, look, at it's, it's getting hazier now, the, the memories of it. Uh, but look at three games against what was a, a really good awfully team. I remember... You know, having a drink with Johnny Pilkington in the premium level after the 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 second game, the, the Jimmy Cooney game, and you know Johnny was devastated and wishing us well in the final, and you were just relieved that you know you you got over awfully, obviously a huge challenge, and you were getting your head ready for the All Ireland final. And then that night, I think we we were staying in the Burlington. There's word circulating, rumor circulating that there's going to be a replay next Saturday, and I suppose maybe deep down in the back of our minds there was a feeling that if you if you played that awfully team three times, you you were going to get done once, and um. You know, look at us. There's swings around about as well, Shane. They maybe feel that '95 got away from them, and you're dead right. We do. <laughs> so, in hindsight, two two of people, um, you know, mightn't have been a bad outcome. But certainly, look at we'll always look at it as, as the one that the one that got away. Um, and that's 25 years on. I think that that'll always stay with us. You know. 
it's yeah. funny that way. Sometimes you don't win the one you feel like you're nearly best place. So like we were, we were flying, we were still going really well in '95. Delivered our best performance nearly ever, I'd say, against Kilkenny and Leinster final. We didn't win the All Ireland. You were probably at your best in '98 and didn't end up winning the All Ireland. It's kind of, and you probably stole the one in '95. It's kind of funny how it works out sometimes. Yeah, I wouldn't say we stole it now. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I look. I think I think as a player, I think look, you've talked to a lot of players. It's the ones you don't win that um that stick with you. I mean, I like two thousand and one. We had savage work done in um, put in that year. Um, to Cyril's first year as manager. Uh, you know, beaten by Tip in the league final. We didn't. You know, we hadn't really. I think. You know, we didn't worry too much about that. We were playing Tip in the first round. Um, down in Parky Keeve, Nicky obviously was there with Tip, and uh, that was a massive game. We lost by a point, fifteen fourteen, having huge work done. Um, and they obviously went on and won the All Ireland, and you know Kilkenny had won it the previous year. Maybe weren't as hungry. I'd always looked on, on that as a as as a real opportunity that got away. And I remember playing golf with Shawnee and Brian Lowe on a couple of days afterwards, and I thought I was I was gutted. The boys were just devastated. I mean, they hardly talked on the way around, you know. Um, so that's one that a lot of people, you know, wouldn't wouldn't mention. But for us, two thousand and one was a year when you know we really felt we were in great shape, really experienced team. You know, we had guys in like Jerry Quinn, you know, Tony Griffin, these guys coming coming on. Um, but uh, Tip beat us by a point and went on and won the All-Ireland and the rest is history. Mm, the All-Ireland Minor Finals on this weekend, uh, James, you, you obviously, you've got um, a minor, I think, Munster medal from 1989. There's going to be a huge crowd in at this game because obviously it's a double header with the under-20 final as well. Like, it's going to be a great occasion for those lads. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant occasion. And, and fair play to Crook Bart for making the decision to put the two of them on together because... Um, yeah, tick, stand tickets sold out. I think one of the terraces is, is open and, and almost sold out. So, I, I what, what there'd be 35 40,000 people down there brilliant for both sets of players to play in front of an atmosphere, in front of a crowd and, a, and an atmosphere like that. And listen, obviously, Claire, you know, we lost the most from minor final last year to, to tip on penalties, um, you know, in the gate grounds. Um, you know, still a good few, a good, good scattering those lads underage. Um, and they've had a great year, Shane. I mean, seven matches to get here. Um, and obviously, look at played Offaly, played Dublin, played Wexford, played Kilkenny, played Galway in challenge matches before the Munster Championship. But it's the round robin is just brilliant in terms of giving these guys the games. And you know, I mean, we we probably played lads in in, in minor championships, under twenty one championships back in the day when you know straight knockout, one bad day at the office, you're gone. Um, and that was certainly the case with me at, at under twenty one um, in in ninety ninety three. So yeah, look at Clare. Obviously up against it. I mean, Galway, I think from all the way up, they've been, you know, the crack team. And obviously, Nyland is just something special. And, uh, you know, they, they to beat Kilkenny by 12 points in the Leicester final. And again, to put Cork to the sword pretty comprehensively, they'll, they'll win his favourites. But these Clare boys are battle-hardened. Um, and we match up pretty well with them in terms of, you know, we've got two guys in our full-back line, you know, Ronan Keane and, and, and Owen Gunning, that are absolutely top class. We've got a centre-back, James Hagerty, who... In Flannans, we we regard this guy from when he came in as a first year as you know the next great prospect. He's just a fantastic player, um, and you know we're well balanced. We we've got a bit of depth on the bench, and I don't think these guys are, are in any way going to be thinking about backing down from Galway. They'll be going for it. And um, as I said, you know we, we've got I think a better hurling team than Kilkenny or Cork. I think we've more ball players, um, and I I think you know we we won't be too far away if we can just put the shackles on. You know, on the islands, obviously, Rabbit, I thought was really good against against Cork. You know, he's 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 not only able to win the ball, but he's he's unselfish. He takes the right option. He's a handful, and they're experienced and they're very very well balanced. Galway, uh, but I I give the clear lads a fighting chance. I'd imagine, Jamesy, do you get a good buzz out of even working with the younger fellas in Flannans? You know, teaching them the ropes and that kind of thing, and seeing them go through the ranks then as well. I believe you do a lot of work with particularly the underage, or you did anyway in recent years. Ah, I mean, and look at listen. I'm involved with teams, but I mean, look at when they come into us. I mean, the clubs have done the work at that stage. The school teachers at primary level. I mean, you know, we're lucky. We're a big, very big school, Michael, and we have a big pick, and we've loads of fellas that obviously want to hurl. And we're lucky at the moment in Flans because, you know, Jack Brown, Tony Kelly, Brendan Bugler, um, a fellow called Michael Donnelly from the Americas, um, you know, this Jimmy Walsh, Darren Chaplin is in there. Like, we've got a great infusion of young men, young young lads. You know, that I mean, I'm an old lad now. I'm I'm, I'm my fifth. But, uh, you know, that have given it another shot of energy um, and, and, and adrenaline. So, look, at we, we, we won the Dean Ryan two years ago. Um, I was involved with Tony and, um, and Michael Donnellan and, uh, you know, James Hagerty, um, you know, 
Fred Hagerty, Ronan Kilroy, some of those guys that are playing on Sunday were, were playing for Flans. But we beat Arsenal in the final. And I mean, there was another heavy contingent, you know, Matthew Holland, um, Mark O'Brien, uh, you know, Owen Begley. Some of these guys are starting, we're, we're, we're playing for Arsenal. So obviously, you know, that was a good indicator that Clare at that age should be really competitive. Um, given the number of clear players around the field and that in, in the Dean Ryan, which is the, the next level down from Harty, it's under 16 and a half. I think it's, it's going to under 17 now. But yeah, we knew we knew that we were, you know, we, we had really good talent coming in. And yeah, it is great, Michael, to see these guys kicking on and wearing the Clare jersey and hopefully, you know, going to wear the Clare jersey in years to come. And certainly Hagerty, Gunning, Ronan Keane, some of these guys, they looked to have, you know, the mentality, the attitude, the athleticism um, and all the hurling that's required to, to, to go on and, and hopefully do that in years to come. Yeah, James, when um, we had Leo O'Connor off the under-20 manager on a couple of weeks ago, he was talking about last year's disappointment against Tip in the All-Ireland final with that late Paddy McCormick goal that, you know, obviously snuck it for Tipperary, that the players were using that to drive him on this year. I think Adam Screeny mentioned it in his interview as well. Do you think the same is uh, the case for the, these guys with the, you know, that suffered the pain with Clare last year against Tipperary in the penalty oh. shootout? Yeah, I mean, like certainly the, the lads that played. I mean, you know, I mentioned Gunning, I mentioned um, you know James Hagerty, um, Matty O'Halloran, you know Fred Hagerty, yeah, Michael Collins, all those guys. Yeah, I mean, obviously it was bitterly, bitterly disappointing. I mean, you know, to be level at full time, then level at extra time, go to penalties. I mean, we thought we'd never get out of Limerick that night. Um, it was really tough, really tough in hindsight. You know, you, you're wondering should any 17 year old or 16 year old, and some of these guys might have been not far off, 15, um, you know, having that pressure. But listen, like, what like, what a stage to be playing on. I mean, there was a great crowd in there that night, brilliant atmosphere. Um, and I don't think any of the lads that took penalties or missed them on that night would take it back for a second, only if they could obviously re retake the retake the shot. So, no, I, I, I think, Shane, those guys are using it as fuel. The way you were, or, or Michael or I would, in, in, in similar circumstances, you know, you, like, success sometimes maybe sates the appetite. But when you're close and, you know, you come up short, I, I think if anything, it, it drives you on. And certainly some of the Clare lads use that in Munster. I mean, they, they had tip at home in the first round in Shannon and gave one of their best performances, you know, which which got them up and up and running. Um, and, and they've driven on from there. So, yeah, it's probably there in the back of their minds. But Galway, you know, obviously, I think the Clare lads are looking at this Galway team as, you know, people are, have been telling them that they're unbeatable and, you know, they're a generational, full of generational talents and all that. As I said, I, I think Clare are coming to play on, on Sunday, and as you'd expect it to be. Um, and it makes it makes for a massive, a massive final because look at the Galway lads probably as well are thinking, look at they came up short against Tip last year. Um, you know, like the captain, you know, Colin Clean is a heap of them again that were they were playing last year or on the panel last year, not, not necessarily starting. Uh, but they'd be bottling that disappointment as well. Um, you know, none of those guys have an hour in the middle and both sides get the opportunity to to do it on Sunday. And, you know, where else would you rather be if you're 16 or 17 years of age only on that stage, playing in front of that crowd with that prize to play for? And I think it's their eighth game of the this season. I think he played something like eight last year as well. Um, James, if you all accounts, development is a word that's been thrown out in Clare an awful lot more now, even with this team. And I know it would be unbelievable to get across the line, but there seems to be a bit of a mentality shift with your development squads that... It's all, I know Rob Mulcahy is doing great work and is it Kieran McDermott and loads more, Sean Stack, many, many more. But that seems to be the, the mantra within Clare. Winning is great, but we want to be as visible as possible towards the latter stages of championships and bring as many lads through as possible because, you know, fair to say your pick probably wouldn't be the same as a Galway maybe or a Limerick or even a Tipperary or something like that. It's all about maximising the numbers you get through the ranks. I think I think yeah I think what they've what they've tried to do is is look at not not narrow it down you know too early in, in terms of like listen if you can bring in you know 60 70 guys um at 14 and 15 and okay like when we go to play Cork um our first team will be competitive our second team could get caned you know what I mean and and the third team you know really well beaten because we don't you know we don't obviously have the same depth or the same numbers that, that Cork maybe tip or maybe some of the, the the bigger counties would would have. Um and maybe those guys, you know, played matches, challenge matches where maybe Watford maybe brought up one team or Limerick might have two teams, whatever, where, you know, they might have struggled. Um but, you know, I, I think as I said, the lads have been focusing in on on 
other things and other metrics and um you know as I said, it's not all about success at 14 or 15 or 16 you know you want to be competitive um you know you want to make sure that you're doing things the right way the snc side obviously is a massive part of it because if you're not doing that now you know you you you, you just can't compete um and claire you know they're they're they're, they're a biggish team um and they've been able to go toe to toe with the corks and the kilkenny's um and, and and the other counties but that's because the work has been the work has been done and these clear lads have been training probably that's four nights a week since um you know since november um you know one night one night a week in the gym every week they're doing all the snc stuff a couple of hurling sessions they've as i said before they started they, they played all the other leinster counties um i remember you know seeing them play tip earlier earlier in the year so it's a big commitment but one that these guys have been absolutely willing to sign up for and you know they've They've got the rewards. They've a monster minor medal in their back pockets. We've only won five ever. Um, that's not to be sniffed at. We won a minor at Ireland in '97 when we didn't win the monster. I think we came we came through the back door. We don't have we don't have too many of those. I think that was probably our first or second ever. So, yeah, first, it, it's, it's your it's only pretty, one, I think, James. Yeah, I think it's your only one, is it? Think, yeah, quite possibly. Yeah. yeah. So you know, so these guys are, are are making their own history, and you know, but they're they're a really really you know good bunch and lucky to have people of the caliber of Brian O'Connell and Donald Maloney. Um, you know, at the helm, um, you know, look at just super people and quality people, and you know, I've seen firsthand the work that's, that's that's been done with them, and um, you know, it's 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 because of that that the lads are where they are. And Jamesy, um, I was going to ask you then about one of the main men that go a Cork have to, or Clare have to try and stop this weekend is Aaron Nyland. Have we heard of? Has there been a more highly touted minor in years than Aaron Nyland? Well, let's just look at you know. Joe Kenning, I mean, most of these guys that are probably touted are, have come out of Galway. Mm. Um, you know, and, and Galway just seem to produce these guys, these these brilliant miners. Now they don't all come through, but certainly in Ireland, um, I mean he's he's electric. Like he, he gets it and he's thinking goal all the time. Uh and I mean he got a shot off against Cork in the yeah. semi final. I, I, I don't know how I think we know a backlift and the power he generated and the Cork here pull off a really good save, but yeah, he's He's special. Um, now we have a fellow lads on gunning, Mark Screeny last year. Um, Screeny might have sipped him once, but he is this guy's a serious operator. If you haven't seen on gunning play lads, uh, he got he, a point in he, he got a point in the Munster final, was it, Jamesy? Where he sold it nearly the of the field. It was outrageous. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, th- this guy is this guy is hurling news, not very poor. He's just the fella that they all hate marking and training. He's small, but he's stocky, he's aggressive. Play cornerback last year. He's the fireman in the full back line. He's a brilliant player, and he, you know, now look, look at like Parik Dory, who coaches Galway, lives in Clare, right? He teaches in Shannon. Like God will have watched Clare play six or seven times. God will know more about Clare than maybe Clare know about themselves. And Clare would probably have to do something different in terms of the way they set up. Maybe you know to to I suppose because God will. I mean, you, you know, the best laid plans. You have somebody earmarked to, to Martin Island, and suddenly he he pitches up at eleven. And what do you do? Do you take your centre back out of there? So, you know, Clare going to be ready. Have to be ready for that. But certainly, like stopping him and Corbin, his influence and Corbin, obviously the influence of Rabbit are two big things that Clare have to Clare have to do. But as I said, Gunning, you'd assume will match up on Island. Ronan Keane, the full back, has been brilliant. He's he, this guy is a guy like who tore his crucial think at fourteen. He's tall. He's rangy. He is just he's been exceptional for Clare all year. And as I said, James Hagerty at centre back just looks like a senior hurler, playing minor, has time on the ball, reads the game unbelievably well. Absolutely class player. Uh, so Clare have good players at the back and they match up well with Galway in that regard. Um whether we've enough at the other end of the field, you know, for forward Mark O'Brien is very quick, hasn't been playing well, though has been out of form, but he's a guy who's dangerous if if he gets if that guy could fire and get rolling on Sunday. Um, I think, as I said, we have we have every chance. Mm, Michael, James, I'm going to leave you on this note because uh, I know you love a good siege mentality. Comment in from Stephen Loftus. He says <laughs> Galway, go- Galway going for the record of winning every game in a minor championship by at least ten points. You love the siege mentality with the seniors going into the Gaelic ground. So any you know fodder or anything you need, we'll fire it your way. Absolutely no problem. Cheers, Asna. That's that's that could be a clear oh. Stephen Loftus. Uh, his nephew Robbie could be on the panel. So. Maybe he might be throwing a bit of petrol on the bonfire there. But yeah, look at I'd imagine Donal and the lads, this will be big enough, this, you know, Galway unbeatable, you know, and so on. But look at the, the Clare Miners, as I said, it's it's an Ireland final. If if you can't get up for that, uh, there's something wrong with you. And the Clare boys will be up for it. Whether they're good enough, 
remains to be seen because you know credit to Galway, excellently coached, full of fellas who were you know are well able to hurl, really high skill level, and as 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 we mentioned, a couple of what looked like maybe generational players. So big test for Clare, but. That should be a great day in Torres. I'm really looking forward to it. Mm. Well, look, thank you very much for your time, Jamesy, and do enjoy the matches on Sunday. Cheers, lads. Great to talk to you, all right? Cheers, Jamesy. Okay, great to talk to Jamesy. Do you know, actually, because there are no senior top-level Liam McCarthy or, or Leinster Munster matches on this weekend, that probably makes the scramble for tickets for these minor and under-20 games that bit, you know, hotter. Because, you know, best will in the world with all the lower-grade competitions at senior level, they're not exactly going to be drawing crowds away from this game. Yeah, no, I wouldn't think so. I'd say there's a fair appetite from your neutrals to go to games like this as well. Like, Turles makes it very accessible to a lot of people mm. as well. I saw something, I shouldn't even be bringing it up. Are, are Wexford the only team that have won on All Ireland that aren't directly connected to Tipperary? So, it's fairness. It, there is, a, there, like, there's hurling coming from every direction, like an octopus out of Tipperary. So, it makes the game very accessible, even uh, to neutrals. And to be honest, like, with Tip not being involved as well, you know, every you know, you'd have everyone would have a little graph for you know some of the counties involved, like maybe more so if it was if a tip were involved, it would be more anti-tip or whatever. But um I I, th- I think the I think it's great that this focus is gonna be really, really heavily on these kind of underage games and like maybe the GA have fallen on, you know, maybe the perfect solution for maybe the minor not being played before a senior anymore because it's under 17, 17 and twenties to go together in somewhere like Turles and create a massive occasion around it. I think it's perfect. Yeah, I mean, I can't wait to go to it. Uh, I mean, like, I'm going out of my way to make sure I get down to see it this weekend. That's the excitement I had as a total mm. neutral. I don't care who wins either game, being honest with you. Yeah, look at the players even. Like, if you look, obviously, you know, Screeny and Dan Ravenhill and a few more on our side, Ben O'Connor, Ben Cunningham, Michael Mullins, like, these are, they're real no, exciting talents. Names. Aaron you know, Island, Owen Gunning. Like, I saw, I watched a bit of the Clare Munster final and see this, Gunning lad, this little small diminutive cornerback racing up the middle of the field, scoring a point. You know, nearly I think it was off his hurl. And then obviously you have Aaron Island on the other side as well. Um, it's probably, the fact that they're they're going to be you know there's more focus on them. I think even makes these players even bigger. Do you remember when we were growing up? Like it was Richie Power or it was Cha or it was Richie Hogan or it was TJ or it was Joe. I'm Canning. a bit older than that, Bernie. Yeah, yeah. You, I don't know who we talking about with you. Like. I don't know who we're talking about. We're minors back in your day, but there was always a great um, there was always a great focus on particular players and particular games. Like I remember Galway playing Kilkenny in a replayed minor final. Gonna say maybe oh four in Gal. Uh, it was Kilkenny and Galway in Tullamore. Uh, Richie Hogan was playing, and it was just they were around our age, and you're just falling. This is like the biggest. This is as big as a senior game when you're when you're of similar age to some of the lads involved. So there's going to be a great buzz around that game. Yeah. Um... It was only changed to a double header because Charlie Mitchell was playing and the Joe Mack wasn't originally planned to be a double header. But look, the way it's worked out, it's great. Owen Downey can play, Charlie Mitchell can play. And you want to see these lads out there for uh, for this huge game. Right, so the ring record and Maher finals are on this weekend. So just you can see here, all the fact files are on our game.ie if you want to have a look at that. So Mead are bidding, bidding to win the Christie Ring Cup for a third time, have been previously lifted it in 2016 and 19. Derry are in the final for the third time and they lost in 15 and 2021. So you can see their paths to the final. Uh, also in the Nicky Racker Cup final, Donegal against Wicklow. Donegal are looking for a fourth record title, having won it in 2013, 18, and 20, uh, 2020. Wicklow are seeking their first title. Wicklow beat Donegal by two points in this year's group clash in Letterkenny. Uh, then also the Laurie Maher final is Monaghan against Lancashire. Lancashire in the final for a third time, having lost the previous two by a point, which was Sting. And Leach from edged them out in extra time in, 2020, in 2019, a year after Sligo had beaten them. Monaghan beat Lancashire by seven points in this year's group clash. So maybe Monaghan will be fancying themselves because of that reason, and um, so those those finals are all huge um, on their own on their own merits this weekend. They are indeed uh, lots of different angles to them. Um, Saoirse Bulfin, obviously, who kind of would have been Davy's Davy Fitz's right hand man in various counties, definitely in in Wexford and Clare. Anyway, he's the Mead manager. Um, I think anything other than a than a ring cup, um, having been up at McDonough level, would be seen probably as a failure. They've done they've ticked every box so far. And they'd probably be warm enough favourites to get over Derry in the final, albeit Derry were beaten in a ring final a couple of years ago by Offaly. So they've proven pedigree at that level. Uh, Donegal and Wicklow is interesting. Um, 
Wicklow have been operating at ring uh, ring cup level for the last good few years, but they've gotten everyone back on board and would have been heavy favourites to win the record before it started. They've Andy O'Brien, who anyone who's seen lower tier hurling would know just how talented he is. Like so Andy O'Brien, John Henderson, Christy Morehouse, uh, and a few more. They they got stung by Donegal in the Division Two B, what was a league semi final earlier on this year. They beat them by a score, I think, when they played them a couple of weeks ago in the record. Wicklow would be fancy, but there shouldn't be that much in it, and there won't be much between between Monaghan and Lancashire. And I have the the little soft spot for Lancashire, obviously, with the with the couple of Offaly lads involved. So hopefully they'll hopefully Matt Connor wins today, uh, Lancashire win on Saturday, and Offaly win on Sunday, and we'll be very very happy men in the faithful. Are you are you kind of are you very optimistic of winning on Sunday, or where are you at with it? Despite um, Cork being favourites, quite yeah, quietly confident, I'd say quietly confident. Um. Yeah, I, I think I think we'll have it tight for most of the way. Um, the only worry is that physicality and maybe depth wise with their squad, we've probably got a couple of injuries. They've got Owen Downey back, which makes their squad even stronger. Uh, Michael Dignan talked about you know the lads that they're capable of bringing on to turn a game in the forward line. Not sure if we have that at the moment with the few injuries that we have with Shane Rigney out and with Ben Miller out at the at the far end, but. Uh, yeah, I'd be quietly confident that we'd keep it really competitive and give ourselves a chance. And it would come down to probably something similar to what Jim James is saying about the minor there. It'll come down to in the last 10 minutes whether we're good enough or not. And yeah. I'd I'd love to be in a situation where I'd love to be in a situation where we were able to right the wrong of last year's all Ireland minor final. So hopefully we'll be there thereabouts and give ourselves a chance. Mm, Darla Han says Offaly have every right to be confident. Dave Bryan says 12 Bray Emmett's men on the Wicklow panel have made a fierce difference to Wicklow. By the way, just with the Cork under 20s, uh, one of the one of their subs who isn't even being used at the moment, Ben Nyan, was with us with the Freshers in UCD this year, about six foot four, and the man really can hurl as well. And if he I don't know, maybe he's carrying an injury, but if he wasn't even getting in the last day against Clare, like that'll just show you the depth of their panel. They have so many players that are absolute lightning on the ball. Colin Walsh is a player that you couldn't help but like. Um, there's the left-handed inside four. Is it Ross O'Sullivan? He like there's Ross O'Sullivan's excellent. There's Timmy so Wilk many. as well. Like there's so mm. many, there's so many lads there, and I don't know like what they've done uh, S and C wise over the past, you know, six or seven years. But I know there's, there's a certain element of um, you know natural ability that certain lads would have and lads of certain height and whatever and plenty of scope for physical development but it definitely looks like they've gotten their s and c right look how mobile they are look how strong they are look how robust they are remember ben cunningham got a ball against claire in the Munster final a little a little snap flick up off the ground and he just went away and he'd no right to go away um that that'd be probably a bit of a worry we're physical and we're fast but cork maybe look a look a step ahead but listen as i said i don't think the awfully lads are they're fearless, so that will definitely help. Mm, okay, well, look, we're hoping to get Joe Dooley and or uh, Jimmy Barry Murphy on the next minute or two. I might play a little clip here just to give you a chance to try one of the boys if you want to see if uh, see if they can uh, click in. I'll tell you a good story there, actually. I can remember going up um, to the All-Ireland semi-final the time, we beat, the time we beat Limerick, and we used to get a train that time from... Um, we used to get the train from, from Limerick, and... There's, we book off two carriages or whatever for the backroom team, maybe three, I suppose, with all the backroom team that was there. But we um, we used to get the lunch and all in the train on the way up. And next thing, at a particular time, Joe O'Connor would go around with the Dior lights, you know, for the hydration. And I can remember we'd all go up on our own at our own time and get our get our door Dior light. And uh, I can remember Mark Flaherty going up. Now Mark wasn't even on the twenty six. And um, he goes up and he gets his Dior light and all that. And uh, I was just thinking to myself, like, this is, everyone is buying into this. Like, you know, the whole group, like, this is a lad, he's not even talking today. So inside in the dressing room anyway, I was just, you know, saying a couple of words to the group. And I was just saying, you know, we owe it to the guys that aren't talking now today. You know, we, we need to do it for everybody. And I said, look, Mark Flaherty, he wasn't even on the 26. And he was drinking a Dior light in the train on the way up. Let's, we owe it to everybody, you know. So that was grand anyway. And we... Obviously, won the match and we're on the way back down. And then I was sitting beside Fly on the train, you know. So um, he says to me, he goes, Bugs, just on the, uh, the Dior light thing, he goes, right? He goes, man, I had eight pints last night. He goes, my head. <laughs> yes. he, goes, <laughs> he said, my head was spinning. I was either, I'll chance this or otherwise I'm getting the fuck off the train. He goes, <laughs> uh, for more exclusive content. Does it make sense? Think about it, like.
Does it make sense? You're staying the right Can you understand why we're doing it? Yeah. Yeah. Staying with him. Is it something that you had thought of, like as guards before? No. The reason behind it. You were taking a step back with him, aren't you? Because yeah. then you're, yeah, yeah. Because the, the, the biggest problem before would have been. Yeah. I'm a big man. I'm not that thing. I'm high. No way. He's taking going past me. Yeah. What you actually want to do is the most freeze come out of the more aggressive practice. So you the ball and I'm coming in power. Break. Well, what you're doing is you're trying to fool him and fool the referee. We're trying to do it. He's coming at me, right? I'm stopping and going back with him. Well, play, 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 play. But I'm going back with him. I'm not instant tackling him. Or, or I'm not instant putting him back in the door. I need to get the ball off. And nine times out of ten, actually, my job is, as a car back or a wing back or whatever it is, is to slow you down. And the second man comes in and takes the ball off. So a couple of coaching tips there from uh, Owen Brislan, who of course was over Monlean this past year. Any look? Yeah, JBM should be should be nearly ready to go. I, 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 he thought he was waiting in the background. He should be nearly ready to go. The, there's a fresh link on to him, so hopefully he'll be hopefully he'll be in in a second with a bit with a bit of luck um, before he comes on as well. Like what a what an icon! <laughs> like they don't get much bigger in terms of sport personalities and sport icons. But a Cork Munster or probably in Ireland even. Um, like I remember, I remember a bit when he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. I remember Derek Foley, the, the journalist from the Star, comparing him to George Best, and uh, like while he was there, and JBM would be very modest, modest man, and uh, I, he didn't really pass much comment to it. But that was the that was the sort of cult status he had uh, back in the day, and even now. Mm, yeah. Oh, and I think we might have him here. <laughs> okay. Hello, Jimmy. How are things? All good, thanks. Great to have I'm you on the show. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, do you remember that, Jimmy Barry? We were we were standing in the auditorium over in Crow Park and you were inducted into the Crow Park Hall of Fame and one of the journalists put a question to, to you where he compared you uh, or called you the George Best of Hurling and I think you <laughs> you you laughed, I think, and he didn't, he didn't make much comment on it anyway. Well, that's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, how are things with you, Jimmy, at the moment? Like, yeah, you don't seem to do all that much media. Maybe you're just stepping back from it or, or whatever. But I'm yeah, sure I just don't get involved in it. I just have enough of it, I suppose, over so many years. And you get to stage when you time to leave it to somebody else. You know? mm. And uh, I suppose I don't get asked too often either. So that's fine, <laughs> that's fine with me as well. And are you as immersed in, in GA as you've ever been? I am, yeah. I'm involved in my own club here at the minor hurling team. Give me a hand out. I'm, I'm only literally a hanger on at this stage. I'm a selector and let the younger lads do all the work. But I love being involved with the young players. Mm, okay. I'll just bring in Joe Dooley's after joining us as well. Joe, how are you? Not too bad, uh, Shane. I was I was kind of in the background there for the last good while, but I, I think technology let me down. I, didn't, <laughs> I must have clicked on the wrong button somewhere. So. <laughs> well, yourself and, uh, and Jimmy Barry would have come up against each other, I'm sure, uh, at times over the years. Yeah, yeah, sir. Um, 1984 was probably the first one. Um, my first time to come across Jimmy Barry on the field of play anyway. Yeah, but always looked up to him and admired him hugely over the years. And I suppose like, like everybody else, you know, a legend in his, in, in his time and still is, you know. Bro broke Back your George. heart that day, Joe. Broke your heart that day. Broke Bro your heart as well. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did, Michael. Yeah, it's, uh, I was listening to James O'Connor a little while ago. They're saying about 95. Well, 84 would, would be in that category with, with, with me and the Offaly team. It's just one of those days you never forget. The days you win, you kind of take them and you go on with them. But the ones you lose, you just can't get them out of your head, you know. So, well, thanks. 80, 84 yeah, 95 would be two of those, you know. So. We, Joe, we have plenty of days to forget ourselves as well, so don't worry, Ron. Uh, uh, that's right, I know that. I know that. That's, <laughs> it's not sport, you know. You exactly. Days and bad days, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, lads, you were both involved, actually, while you have you. Jimmy, you were obviously manager. Joe, you were still playing and probably coming towards the end of your career. Those two games... Games, those two all Ireland semi finals. I throw it to you first, Jimmy, in 99 and 2000. Two of the best games I've ever seen as a supporter, as a spectator, anything. We obviously got our we got our bit of revenge in 2000, Jimmy Barry. But those two games, I like, do you have much memories of them? They were fantastic games from start to finish. I, I do indeed, they're incredible games. And uh, I often remark to people uh, since those games, and I suppose. When you look back on it, most people only remember the finals, either the Leinster final, Munster final, or all Ireland final. And people tend to forget the games that you get there. And the two games against Offaly were incredible. I, I, I'll never forget uh, the semi final in '99. I thought at one stage I turned to Johnny Crowley and said, I just couldn't believe the standard of hurling and the skill of a lot of the Offaly players was phenomenal. And it, it is all, and I, I'm not just saying this because I'm on today, but I've put on the record, they were a phenomenal team and uh, their skill levels were frightening. And they're just, 
fabulous to watch and uh, you know we, we were lucky to get the better of a 99 and they got back at us in 2000 that's the way it goes but they were they were an extraordinary team and uh some absolutely fa- some of the greatest hurlers of all time really run on those teams roughly you know. joe does that does that 2000 semi-final that was kind of maybe the last maybe as some people say like the last kind of sting of a dying wasp maybe in 2000 yeah. semi-final but that was like h- how some of you got yourselves back up to that level after all the hurling you've done that must have been a hugely satisfying one well it, it was michael yeah like to be like to be cork is, is is a huge thing that was something we had never done before and like i'd regard cork as the manchester united of hurling you know like if you can beat cork it's it's a, it's a great day for any county to be honest but you know like 99 was the one probably where we maybe felt we we could or should have won but in 2000 we won maybe when cork maybe should have won it you know it might have been might have been better if it was reversed i'd say to be honest i think we we'd have had a chance of winning the all ireland in 99 i think in 2000 we were just we were just there was just one last kick in us and unfortunately that was in the semi-final and not the final you know <laughs> Yeah, um, I, yeah I, remember, I just probably remember Joe on one occasion because very funny. Brian Corker went to clear the ball, and John Troy came in and flicked it away. From him. That's right. He made look. He made Brian look. We we gave Brian some stick after about it. I can tell you, we got we got great yeah. fun out of it. But it was just <laughs> John's quick thinking. He was incredibly slick man, as you know. And uh, oh, yeah. catch Brian like that was most unusual, you know. Oh, very, very, very unusual because he was in, at the height of his powers at the time. He and, was, and, and he was a, a dominant player. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. gas, lads. If you look at the the, the show a screen from behind the goals of. Uh, Brian Corker throwing up the ball and John Troy isn't even in the picture when he throws <laughs> up the ball. It was that quick, that quick, and he yeah, just yeah, snapped yeah. it and put it over the bar. Um, yeah, was... Boys, the, the two of you are in good form today, but you're probably both licking your wounds. No more than I am, Joe, as an awfully man after last weekend. I'll throw it to you first, Jimmy Barry. Cork out of the championship, but like, what what was your read on Cork this year? Like, one beat Waterford by nine, uh, drew with Tip, obviously coming from behind, beating a pint by. Clare and Limerick, but now out of the championship, had it gone the other way, to me, Cork would have been all Ireland contenders. But what what was your read on on Cork this year? A disappointing end, but promises and some green shoots for the future. Yeah, I suppose a bit of, a bit of both. Um, you've got to assess it and be very honest and realistic about it. I was talking to Pat Ryan the other day, actually, after the game, and you know he was quite up. He's very disappointed, obviously, but I suppose at the end of the day, you've got to be cruel and harsh and say we won one game. Um, we had tip at home in the park probably lucky to draw on the night and we went to Ennis and lost by a point and we came back again from six, seven points down and the same with Limerick so you know you can argue till the cows come home how unlucky you were but you must go and deliver and we, we had the opportunities probably and didn't take them so Pat is quite realistic about that in fairness to him and I suppose from a supporter's point of view which is what I am now uh, I'm bitterly disappointed because I thought if we got out of the group and it is literally the group of death um, I really feel a younger team could have developed more and more as we went forward, either through the Munster final or the qualifiers, which wouldn't have worried me either. So from that point of view, um, it's a long way till next year for Cork, but that's the harsh reality of championship life. And um, we had our chances and we didn't take them. So there's no point in complaining. No, we were very good, a great progress made, but just came up short of it. Is this team's... Uh, development stunted a small bit, uh, Jimmy, as a result of that, because you know, realistically, when's your next competitive game? Probably late January next year. You're good to eight well, months kind of out in the sidelines. We might be one note next year, actually, whether we have developed. I mean, like, there is there has been huge development, and that's why we're looking forward to the under 20 final on Sunday so much because we feel there are quite a number of players there who will incre- increase the pressure on the existing players, and I've no doubt whatsoever. <clears throat> At least three of them will play a substantial part in the championship next year for Cork. All things going well. So from that point of view, um, there has been good progress. Pat Ryan is his first year, and you know I'm not being in all, but I did say to him the first year I was involved with Cork as manager, it was, I was a disaster. I learned an awful lot from it. I did so many things wrong that I couldn't believe looking back how bad it was and how unprepared I was for the county scene. And well, Pat wasn't anything like that, but. He has made great progress, but I think he has learned an awful lot from it as well. The senior inter-county scene is so unforgiving. It's a vicious inter-county scene. Every county is very, very competitive. And while I'm saying that, I'm disappointed we didn't get out, we didn't develop. I'm sure other counties are thinking the same. The key to, I think the key to it all is, you know, getting to a knockout stage and being having learned so much from the Munster Championship. That's why I think we would have 
defend. I, th- I think honestly, you might laugh now. I think if we got out of Munster or even the qualifiers, we'd have been serious contenders. But again, oh, yeah. a lot of people might say that's a very really stupid comment. That's just my opinion. Yeah, uh, Joe, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy just talked about the pressure there on managers now, and even there's obviously two former senior inter county managers here, haven't you? Managed awfully, obviously, um, and left me off a couple of times. But we won't talk about that. Jimmy. <laughs> we won't talk about that, Joe. Um, the, 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 the pressures, it was probably. The pressure was high back then on inter-county managers, but can you imagine like what it's gone to the level it's gone to now? It's probably nearly doubled, I'd say, since then. Yeah, like uh, back that time when I was doing it, and the same with Jimmy, you were kind of doing it with maybe two or three people with you. You know, you didn't have the kind of the backup teams that's there now. And 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 I think when you're managing your own county as well, you bring a lot of pressure on yourself. You feel you're emotionally involved, I suppose. You know, I, I, I have to say, I found it um, a pressurised situation probably... I gave it everything I could give it and, and the players did as well and we just came up a little bit short but it is it's a tough it's a tough gig you really want to be doing nothing else and be full time at it and and you know it's, players expect a lot more now as well obviously you know they expect all the different um, nutritionists and strength and conditioning and stats and video analysis and there's so much to it it's like running a business almost you know it's it's tough but just going back to the Cork to, to the Cork situation like Cork are gone out of the championship as Jimmy says they won one game out of four but there's a lot of teams relieved that Cork's gone off the pitch I'd say and I'd say including Limerick even you know because Cork were very much potential all Ireland contenders if, if they had got through the, the, the Munster Championship so um, it's a tough one to take they're going to have to wait 12 months now or the big end of it but that's 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 life isn't it you know and um, but I'd say Limerick are very pleased that Cork have gone off the pitch and, and others as well so Kenny and Galway and Tip and the teams that really are home again on, on winning that whole Ireland this year you know <laughs> Jimmy, uh, like as you mentioned, the pressure of inter-county and that um, couldn't help but think of your your son, Brian Barry, and the fact that he's been involved with Rochdale. And I only just copped it there today that he's involved with Man City as the elite development squad manager there as well. What's the pressure like when, you, when you're talking about professional football? And you've, have you had a chance to go over and visit Man City? Yeah, I've been over a few times to see Brian. Yeah, and he's, in, he's managed the academy, as you say. So um, it's a pressurised job too, I suppose. There's nothing like managing a team like your own county, as Joe will tell you, because <laughs> you get plenty more stick than you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't see half the followers, pretty much. Anyway. Whereas in Cork, you know, it was and awfully, you're meeting them every day of the week. If you can't mm. go for a pint, you'll get the lecture about it. You know, but that's, you, you take it on and you know you that. Kind of do, yeah, you kind of do, yeah. And I, I think, you know, when you're when you're managing Cork, or well, I found anyway, it becomes a bit of a drug because you're, you always feel next year might be better, but other people might think so, and you might get fancy too. So you know. And and if I could ask you just one other thing about Brian, like, have you gone over to like, have you met Pep Guardiola or any of the players or anything like that? No, I haven't met Pep. No, I haven't met him. But Brian meets him every day. They work together. He's in there every day with him, and he's meets meets all the players every day. But I've never I have met any of the senior players. No, I don't. Okay. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be I wouldn't be going out to get in the way of the whole scene. It's a fairly highly intense situation. I don't think Pep be looking forward to seeing me. <laughs> <laughs> and does, does he enjoy it over there? He must do. Like, it, oh, he loves it, Jay. He's working in a very high high intensity pressure environment, which he loves. He, as I say, his manager, he was manager of Rochdale and he was offered this job then by Jason Wilcox to take over the academy and they've had a great couple of years, thank God. So it's a highly intense pressurised job you've got. They're very demanding. It's high standards applied and I suppose you're dealing with the some of the elite under 23 players in Europe. So then your job is to develop them and see if they can make the Manchester City senior squad or go on to big careers otherwise, as we saw like with Gavin Bazoon, who's gone to Southampton and, you know, Romeo Latvi has gone to Southampton. These, a lot of them don't make it at Man City, but they have massive careers elsewhere. And, uh, you know, you can see what that becomes after for them. And in terms of like developing young players, with your involvement with the Bears um, minor team, would would many of them be featuring this Sunday in the All Ireland Under Twenty final? Yeah, well, I was I was involved. Brian Hurley was the manager of the Bears uh, minor team two years ago. We won the county, and you had Ben Cunningham, William Buckley. They were both playing on Sunday. Uh, Jack Catlan, I was on the senior panel. I'm not the senior panel. They were all playing with our minor team two years ago. But Ben Cunningham and William Buckley are the two players now who have really come forward this year to be, and Kieran Doolan is a sub as well, another very good player from our club. So we've three on the panel on Sunday and we're very, very proud of that. Mm. Joe, how excited are you for this match on Sunday? We could be looking at 40,000 in, in some Yeah, days. yeah, like there's, I'm sure I'm sure Michael expressed it earlier on, I didn't hear him, but like there's huge um, anticipation in Offaly, you know, about, about this team and this group of young lads and you know, there's huge crowds following, which is, which is proof of, you know, of the talent that they have and you know, but I think um, they're going to be up against it on Sunday, not kind of trying to blow up Cork or anything, but we have too many 
lads kind of maybe just for two more years under the age so it's going to be tough to, and they're going to, it's going to be tough but all i hope is that they go out and express themselves and they have done that right through the, the minor last year and, and and every game they played this year to go out and express themselves and play to the best of their ability and see where that takes them you know yeah jimmy is there any underage like with, with cork any moment that kind of uh, sticks out with you when you were playing um i suppose my minor years were very very enjoyable i played both hurling and football and uh managed to win the hurling my first year even though i made a very minimal contribution in croke park in the final i, I had a woeful game was actually substituted with about 20 minutes to go which helped get cork over the line <laughs> <laughs> we, we, were, we won the hurling that year we beat in the football final by mayo the following year we were half flavors to be kenny the hurling and we lost that and won the football by beating tyrone so it was a great couple of years as a minor yeah so very very lucky but um i think joe makes a very interesting point there about Offaly, and it's something that i learned i i think i've learned from being involved with cork minor team over the years that extra year or two of maturity makes a huge difference I'm not entirely sure how many of the Offaly players are underage again for the next two years, but I did find that that um, a, a minor at 17 was a completely different player, as it was an all-day under-18 minor. It was a completely different player a year on, and it, I found that it was the year we won the minor All-Ireland uh, when I was coach in 94, I think we beat Kilkenny. Kenny. Um, none of the players were underage the following year. So I suppose mm -hmm. I wasn't particularly worried about who was coming after me, but... The reality is that when you have a team of 18 year olds or as it is on Sunday of nearly 20 year olds, that's a big factor, I think. So if if most of the Cork team, for example, are a year or two older than their Offaly counterparts, I think it's a significant factor. It is, it is, yeah. Isn't yeah, it, Joe? I think, uh, yeah, I yeah, think our numbers doubt, are in yeah. the mid 20s, aren't they, Joe, of lads that are underage next year? Like, uh, oh, I think there's, tw the I think squad, there's, tw yeah. there's, there's 24 or something underage next year. But of the starting team at, on, on Sunday, I presume there'll be eight or nine or ten that will participate that are will have two more years at, at this grade, you know. So that's that's asking a lot when you come up against a guy two years older. Than you, and particularly in Cork, where they're all going to be physically strong as well, you know. And that's trying to blow up Cork or anything. No, no, no. That's just, that's, just, just, just yeah, that's the reality of it. Like. The reality of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, Joe, there's no harm in blowing them up either, all right? <laughs> <laughs> let's go, let's go. There's never any danger of blowing up Cork. There's too much, don't worry. <laughs> just a comment that you made earlier, Jimmy, um, and then Pat Ryan's obviously gone his first year, and you said your first year as a manager was a bit of a disaster. Now, I'm sure that that's you been probably overly harsh. No, no it actually no. was a disaster. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and did you did you feel the heat after that year, or like are you forgiven down on this side? <laughs> Not at all. It was we, we got it. We got huge criticism, and I suppose in hindsight, some of it was justified. I took over, I suppose, and um, from Johnny Clifford, and I think Johnny was retiring. And I suppose the situation was that uh, some of the players I took over and I was coaching, then all of a sudden were players I had played with even. So it was Teddy McCarthy was still there, Tomas Mulcahy was still the panel, Jim Cashman. And I played with all these lads and, you know, it was difficult, but the lads, in fairness, they, they tried to give me everything, which they did give everything. But it was just the reality of moving on then that they knew themselves that their time had come and that they were, they, they all opted out themselves rather than being dropped or anything like that. But it, it's a learning process. It's, it's a severe learning process because it, there is no comparison between minor or under 17 it is now or 18 and under 20 and senior. And even then, um, you know, the Cork and Offaly players who are playing on Sunday, it's absolutely no guarantee whatsoever that any of them will make senior level. Because I played in a minor final in one account and all earned with Cork. And I think I was the only one that played senior after. So, you know, it is quite a huge step, even though it's a marvellous progression. And, you know, I've seen with Offaly last year in the minor final, it was heartbreaking defeat and all that. But they've obviously got over that and they've bounced back to be another all Ireland final. So the next couple of years, I think, are very exciting for Offaly hurling, same as we think they are in Cork for our group. Who have been very successful as well. Definitely, yeah. Uh, there's a co couple of questions in, uh, Jimmy. I might just fire one or two at you. Uh, one, one fellow wants to know how do you keep so fit? Me? Yeah. I wouldn't judge a book by the cover. <laughs> 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 I like, I like my few, I like my few pints. I do plenty of walking. So they keep, keeps me in some kind of shape. And uh, yeah, I do it was actually, point, but I don't overdo it. It was actually up the Rockies, like your your great rivals. He just said, please ask God how he stays so fit. So I, won't, I won't make the comment on that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask is, um, what was it like to hear Roy Keane say on, you know, on live television that you're a sporting hero? That was lovely, yeah. It was really nice. Yeah, I've met Roy a few couple of times. Not very often. Um, 
but I, I wouldn't know him personally. Brian has met him in Manchester quite a bit because they're living near the same area and he's bumped into him for a cup of coffee and that. I wouldn't have come across Roy very much, but uh, it was a lovely thing to say. Is, uh, he said it and it was nice and I got a kick, I got a kick over it. I got plenty of slagging over it, of course. Hmm. Uh, yeah, well, good good type of slagging, in fairness. Ah, very good. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. He's a huge hero around Cork. People have... Um, he's box office entertainment, sure as we know, and he's, a, you know, he calls as he sees it. So I got a kick over it, I must say. Mm. Uh, Jimmy, I grew up around in an area in, in Burris Lee where it's all dogs and course and, and yeah. you know, greyhounds and all that kind of stuff. You, do you maintain a big interest in, in dogs? Yeah, sure, I do. Yeah, I have still a couple of dogs. I know, I know, the Kennys are a great greyhound family around Burris Lee, and I know lots of people up there. And I worked out, I work up that way quite a bit. So I meet a lot of the Tipperary people. And uh, I must say, outside of Cork, and I, it's not take, I love going to Tipperary because you've got hurling, you've got racing, got greyhounds, every sport. It's typical, all the sports I'm interested in anyway. So when I'm working up that way, I get great kick out of it. Yeah, would, would it be fair to tip? Why didn't you yeah, transfer well, up, Jimmy? No, no, I was going to say to you, Jimmy Barry, would it be fair to say one of the main reasons you love Tipperary is because you did you, ne- or am I right in saying you never lost the senior hurling championship match to Tipperary? I'm glad you said it, Michael. Yeah, that's true, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good man. No wonder you love going up there. <laughs> that, is, no, that, is a lo- that is a lovely thing to have under your belt. Well, I, could, I couldn't have think of anything sweeter. Unfortunately, when I was manager, they put me to the sword a few times. Too. They made up for it plenty, I can assure you. I uh, am. Yeah. Um, Joe, who would be, like, of all the players that you played with or against over the years, who would be some of the most skillful guys? Oh, gee, for, um, that's a tough question. Um, skillful wise, like John Try, obviously, is very skillful. Mm. Um, my own brother, Johnny, Brian Whelan. If you go back to the older team, then like Eugene Coughlin was was a very skillful, a real good ball player, you know, and could mix it as well. Um, Mark Horrigan, you know, you could kind of pick so many, you know, but kind of outside, outside of Offaly, then gee, for sure, where do you start? Nicky English, DJ Carey. Um, if we looked at Cork, it'd be kind of um, Tony O'Sullivan, like was a, a little wizard, you know, like there was there's just so many players, like the, it's, it be, it's hard to kind of name one or two, you know. Mm. Joe, I'm very keen to bring this up. Uh, ask Joe, what are your memories of the last five minutes of the 1994 All Ireland final? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Euphoria. Yeah, jeez. I couldn't believe it, to be honest, Michael. You know, like, it was just, um, I suppose when Johnny hit the goal, things weren't looking great before that. And then it just took off and we couldn't be stopped. You know, just brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> Did you ever believe that somebody who came on in that game for Limerick would now be leading Offaly in an All Ireland yeah. Twenty final? It's gas because there was only chatting Leo last week. He he's from Clahan originally. That's uh, right. Same, That's same right. as Mike Galligan and same as Eamon Cregan. So he was playing for Limerick or coming on for Limerick. I think he got scored that day. And his club mate, who he used to poke the ball back to from behind the goals when he was hitting freeze in the eighties, was managing Offaly in an All Ireland final. It must have been absolutely crazy. But well, Leo's done a fantastic job. Uh, oh, without a doubt, all yeah. accounts with Offaly, he's really bringing yeah. the whole thing together. Yeah, he came on. He came on in ninety four. He was Joe. He was marking Joe Erity. I think he might have sneaked one pint off of Joe. But he's done an absolutely brilliant job since he came in. He's very. What I like about him is he's just very kind of level headed and grounded and seems to have he's in full control of the whole setup there and, and has a good team with him as well and good players but he's doing an absolutely brilliant job and fair play to him you know Jimmy um, Patrick Horgan obviously is still on the scene this year and what a brilliant season he had 35 years of age now first off what did you make of him just he's what an Indian summer he continues to have and number two do you think he, he should stay around next year if, if he has the appetite well I thought he was absolutely fantastic this year again I mean he was a or standout player again. I thought last Sunday, even in the heat of battle, the two outstanding players for Cork were Hoggy and Jamie Arnody. I mean, I thought they were fantastic, and uh, I, my admiration for them for both of them knows no end. Really, I, I was lucky enough to manage them for a couple of years. We just fell short in the Ireland final, but their their dedication and their they live for the game. Their fitness levels are extraordinary, and uh, I'd see no reason whatsoever. I mean, if I was manager of Cork next year, I'd be down on my hands and knees. Can ask them to play, but there'll be no question because they'll play on anyway. Hoggy just lives for the game, and uh, there'll be no question whatsoever. And he, um, until he really feels he's gone completely, and he's certainly not that. I, as, as I said, there were the two standout players last Sunday, I thought, and uh, you know, great, great for their players of their age to show that they, if you mind yourself and, and prepare properly, that you can play at this level still. 
Mm. And the same, I suppose, for TJ Reid as well. I mean, like to some of these lads that are continuing to play 15 years on, Seamus Callan would be another. Yeah. And, and Shane Dooley, even Joe's son as well. Like, it's incredible mm. the longevity of some of these lads. Shane is fant- Shane's fantastic player and uh, has given massive service again. And, you know, it is tough when the county is down and you're trying to battle away. And fairness to the, the, the likes of Shane now and Patrick Horgan and Shamie Hardy, they've battled through tough times now. And, uh, as I said, if I was manager of Cork next year, I'd certainly want them. And, you know, you look at Wexford, say, like a player like Lee Chin, another marvellous advertisement for the game. What a player, like. And, uh, you know, what you would, you, if I was manager of Cork in the morning, if I was asked to buy one player over the last couple of years, I actually said a couple of years ago, it would have been Jackie Terrell as a defender. I'd love to have him. Yeah. But if I was picking a player of the last couple of years, certainly Lee Chin would be all up there. He's an incredible player. Mm, really yeah, you have no, you've Noel McGrath and Tipperary and Shane yeah, Callan no, and, and all these really lads as well. Really. You know, like fellas that have a lot of miles on the clock, but they're still they're still producing the goods. Which is, but if you if you mind yourself and watch what you eat and and prepare properly, there's nothing to stop you playing. Once the legs don't slow, you, once you don't naturally slow down, you know that's yeah. Just, it shows the way Noel McGrath reads the game. What a fantastic player yeah, he is as well. Yeah. I mean, he gave a pass against Limerick. Uh, over his head, I don't think any player in the country, country would have done it apart from Noel. He's playing midfield now and he's playing better than ever and getting through the game with no bother. But again, it's just sheer skill and class gets you through in most situations if you have it. And that's why you asked me about Hoggy. Like, what a player. I mean, he's no question him not playing on next year, in my opinion, anyway. No. Mm. Do you think, do you think, lads, um, I'll throw it to you first, Joe. Do you think lads are retired too early? You stayed going, Joe. I think you started in 84. Was, am I right in saying 2000 was your last year? Yeah, from yeah, yeah. 82, 82 was my first year and 2000 was my last one. Yeah, but sure. Like, and, I, and, and I hadn't even intended to retire that year. It was just my, my mother in law passed away suddenly. She was a, um, a Cork woman and just that kind of made me mind up for me, to be honest. But no, like, but as I say, some people, if, if you can avoid injury and some players maybe just lose their speed a little bit earlier than others as well. So you need to be a little bit lucky that way too, I think, you know. And um, but, but I think the, the main thing is if you mind yourself and if you're dedicated enough, you can stay going up to your mid-30s, yeah. yeah. Jimmy, you went to 33, did you? Had you, did you, had, an, had, you had enough at that stage? You obviously had a fairly jam-packed career between hurling and football and club level, club and county. Was it a stage of you'd had enough or was it an injury or...? No, just just very much like I had enough. I played since minor since seventy one with Cork until I played, I played football and hurling up to nineteen eighty, and then I concentrated on hurling for the next six years. So I just felt that I, really my appetite and Joe made a point there. My I felt my pace was going, and that was always a big factor for me. And I just felt that yard of pace was gone, and you know I I just felt it was time to call it a day. Then I'd had enough, and my appetite was gone as well. But that yard of pace certainly made up my mind for me. I went to chase. I got the Galway goalkeeper in 86 out for a ball. Now I wasn't getting anywhere fast, so I said, uh, Get all while the going is good. Yeah, I think, you know, I, think, I think you know when your time comes. I anyway. think you do, you, you Joe. Yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. You I have remember to have um, the real drive and hunger as yeah, well. T- you know, yeah. t- in 2012, when we, we took over Cork again, I came back for my second time, and uh, Ben O'Connor was on the panel still, and the manager on Sunday now, obviously. And uh, oh, yeah, we were desperate for Ben to play on. We played Dublin in Croke Park, and Ben rang me on the Monday morning and said, uh, We played Dublin in the league in Croke Park. And he said, Jimmy, I'm gone. There's no one. And you, you could, one person you could not try to persuade was Ben O'Connor. Ben made up his mind. And he was totally honest. My pace is gone, Jimmy said, I'm out. Gone. Thanks for everything. And that was it. it was, I, I was not, I had to check them on the Monday morning, so I thought things on my mind as well. I remember, I remember that. We had been on the show a while back and he said that they, I don't think they could release a statement until you came back or something at the end of the week or something like that. But that's not, that's not strictly true. But uh, I, was hoping, I was hoping he might change his mind before I came back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Jimmy, yeah. I was chatting to Brian Cody a couple of years ago, and um, I was asking him, "Do you still go for a few pucks?" And he says, "No." And again, he you know decided uh, the house he'd have a few pucks or whatever. Would you still have a few pucks these days? No, I literally haven't caught a hurley since nineteen eighty six in my hand. Go away. No. And like, was there, is there not just a love of even during you know, a cathartic feeling of just pucking the ball around, and you just feel like you've unwound after it? Not really, no. I don't get that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> you just like You're honest, anyway. <laughs> Joe, I love, Joe, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a great support. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't feel the need to get a hurl in my hand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Joe, yeah. do you? Uh, the odd time I would, yeah. I, I, I wall out the back there. I, I 
felt of all against them. But the very odd time, to be honest. Yeah. When, they, when, I mean, I say, when I see kids down the green playing soccer on here, so I'd love to have joined it for 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, look, lads, you've, you've been absolutely brilliant with your time. Uh, so really appreciated that, Jimmy. Enjoy the match of the week. Actually, I suppose the last thing, how will the game go, lads? I'll just start off with you, Jimmy, and then Joe, you might take it on. Yeah, no. Yeah, I look, I've only seen off on television, obviously. Um, I think I, a big factor, I think, is Cork's maturity and the age factor. Um, I, maybe I'm reading too much into that. I'm, I don't know. But I think we have a strong team. They've come through a tough campaign. And I, I'd be, I'm hoping that off this year might have to wait for another one. Mm. But um, I, I, they're, they were brilliant in the minor final last year in Nolan Park. Was, they're a fantastic, skillful team. Um, some fantastic prospects there, obviously, for Offaly. But I just feel that we might have a bit of edge in maturity um, on Sunday. Mm. Joe? Yeah, I, I probably um, like. I'm obviously hoping for an awfully win, and I hope the lads put put in it, do themselves justice. But I, ju- I just think they might be up against it. But um, but if there's if it's if it's if it's tight coming down the home stretch, you never know what will happen, you know. But, but I think the the age factor might just tell against us. But the main thing is that they perform and we build and and, and we're on the, and keep going in, in in the right direction, you know. Okay. Well, Joe, actually, Jimmy or uh, Bernie has one question to ask you. Jimmy, I will we'll let you go there, but really appreciate you joining us and uh, enjoy the match on Sunday. Pleasure, lads. Thank Cheers, you, Jimmy. Yeah. See you, Joe. Bye. All the best. Bye, bye. Okay, so brilliant to have him on. Now, I think it was a story to do with uh, the book that you had out, the Dewey, oh, yeah, a, yeah, a family yeah. memoir. <laughs> and I think Vernie has a question he wants to ask you about that. Well, I'm not, about, not... about. Is it something to do about one of the days we beat Borer? No, no. No, nothing like that, Joe. No, 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 I'd say not. No, I'd say not. No, 95, maybe, no? No, No, I think you ended up with four goals. I think we were in All-Ireland Champions. And was it four, four, um, four to 12 points, I think? Yeah, Michael, uh, yeah Michael Maloney, uh, yeah. kind of a half bar man, scored two of them. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah, right. no, yeah. unfortunately now, Joe, that's not what I want to <laughs> No, I know, well, you're not, so. <laughs> I, I, I had often heard off the record, uh, you know, about different things that happened on team holidays, but I believe you and a few lads, including maybe one of your brothers, got into a bind when you were over in somewhere, somewhere in Asia. <laughs> By all accounts, <laughs> that's true, Michael. Yeah, it's in the book. Yeah, it's in the book. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the book. <laughs> you'll, have, you'll have to give us a bit more than that, John. Ah, sure. It's just one of those things that happened on an old holiday, you know. Sure, we're in the wrong place at the wrong time, and maybe some other people were as well. But anyway, it was a small bit of a melee um, broke out anyway over a stolen camera, and ah, sure, it's a bit of crack, you know. But it was. I can't say who was there, but it was one or two strong lads, and um, the locals weren't as big as we were, but they were, they were they were bigger in numbers, but not in size. So there was a kind of a a bit of a dust up anyway. But we got taken away at the end of it anyway, being the being the only ones maybe with money, I suppose, and we had to pay ourselves out really in the end, you know. But that was one of these things that happened. Like nothing ever happened like it before or since. But anyway, sir, we survived it, you know. Whereabouts were you, Joe? And by all we were in Pattaya, yeah, Pattaya, yeah. And Kilkenny were there at the time, and Kildare and Armad. There was a few Irish teams there at the time, and um, as we had been on a kind of a day trip, we were out all day, jet skiing and on motorbikes, and we were probably dehydrated along with everything else, and we had a few beers, and as I say, a camera went missing, and the locals wouldn't know enough to take, and it so one word borrowed another, and the next thing something happened, and. As I said, it was small as put flying in every direction. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's hilarious. laughs> Joe, in, in general, are, do you feel this that the awfully rise is happening and that this is a thing? It's not just going to be one one group coming through or two groups. Uh, ah, yeah, no, Shane, no. There's it, like Sir Michael will tell you there. At, at kind of a ground level, like there's huge interest and. And in fairness to, to Michael and, and, you know, Callum Cummins and Derville Dolan and all the people that have behind him at county board level, they're putting in a huge effort. Um, you know, they're putting clubs under pressure to, they're, they're fit, you know, they're playing more, they're arranging more games, more competitions. The development squads are being run better. Um, I'd say they're good management appointments. You know, and I cry right across the board, everything, everybody has been made work harder and, more money has been got in as well through kind of you know sponsorship deals with Lenisk and others and fundraising. So like the we're in a much much better place than we were a few years ago. And you know like um, 
and I suppose like this group, of guy, the guy is getting to the minor all Ireland last year is, is has got it has got everybody out behind him, and all the kids are following following them. And even the under twenty footballers a couple of years ago as well. It's not just hurling; we're we're lifting the football as well. So, um, there's no guarantee that it'll lead to success eventually at senior level, but everybody's having a great time following them now. And you know, there's a there's a feel good, a real feel good factor about Offaly G at the minute, which is which is kind of contrary to what we've been used to over the last kind of ten or fifteen years. You know, so it's all good. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, Joe. Thanks very much for joining us and enjoy the match. Cheers, lads. Yeah. No bother at all. Yeah. Thanks, Cheers, Mike. Joe. Yeah. Thanks, Mel. Talk to you soon. Okay. Well, delighted to say we've got Jeffrey Linsky joining us now. Jeffrey, how are you? Good. That's good. Weather's good, and looking forward to the weekend. And we have you stuck inside now on a on a laptop or a phone rather than being out in the sun. Yeah. We're we're Hall is now tomorrow, so uh, from school. So looking forward to it, and hopefully the weather will will go on for another few weeks. What's the buzz like in terms of the All Ireland minor final on Sunday against Clare? Uh, like a, a lot of talk around about the lads. In fairness to them, they've they've played really well in their championship. Um, it's exciting, I suppose, to see new talent coming through with Young Nyland and, and Rabbit in particular uh, leading the way. Um, to be kind of fairly used to lads minor teams going well down here, you know. I suppose most of the talk was all week is about the seniors last last week against Dublin. Mm. And actually, speaking of that, I was in at the game 12 points down and then in a position to win before Dublin equalized a couple of times for a finish. What did you make of Galway? I really disappointed first half in terms of their performance levels. I thought Dublin um, brought an awful lot to the table in terms of um, how to set up to nullify the goal's long puck out. Uh, they went after the lads in terms of pace, uh, ran at them hard uh, and caused a monster of trouble. And I suppose there was no, the, the goal could only improve second half really. Um, they did that, pushed up on the puck out, substitutions worked. Um, Fairness, Jack Grealish, Sean Lennon, uh, being all like, they all did well when they came on. Mm, Just th- th- that kind of pace was probably needed, uh, Jeffrey, off the bench as well, because Dublin. There was definitely times, particularly in that first half, probably maybe the first 45 minutes, where Dublin's pace was causing wreck, particularly around the middle of the field and the whole way through the defence at times as well. Yeah, look, our, our work rate just wasn't there. We weren't tracking runners from deep. Um, we were being overloaded completely in, in our own half of the field. Um, and I suppose, look, the, sc- the score was accurate at half time. The, the two big mistakes, the two goals, get them six points. But in fairness to the lads, they did really well in the second half uh, to come back. Probably should have won it for a finish, but look, they know they have work to do. That's their final is a big prize for the lads now to win a cup, um, and it'll put them straight to a semi, through to a semi final, and and that's what they need to be in with Kenny with the amount of injuries. Could Kenny have mounting up? Um, hopefully, the lads will get the job done Sunday week. Galway really need to win a Leinster title. Like looking back, they haven't won one since 2018, which seems mad. Do you know what I mean? Given the talent that's available, if you'd said after they won the All Ireland in 17, they'd win a Leinster in 18, get to the All Ireland final, and they wouldn't get any silverware of any significance in the five years that followed. Given the talent there, you'd be pretty mm. disappointed. It's a, it's a bit of pressure to go and win something, particularly like you know, let's call a spade a spade. And I'm a Leinster man. Like Leinster is. You know, a hell of a lot weaker than Munster at the moment. Like they, they should be getting their hands on a Bob O'Keefe realistically. Yeah, look, last year didn't deserve it. Uh, year before that as well. You know, they they didn't do enough. So look, for the lads, a lot of players there now. Some of them haven't tasted silverware yet. Um, and I suppose look, it's like getting else. It's going to be a crossroads for Galway some two weeks. See where they're at. They're going to need to put in a big performance in both halves, and not just one. Yeah, and that's that's the frustrating thing, isn't it? And it's it's been thrown at Galway a fair bit that consistency or maybe inconsistency. Wex, the uh, Tom Dempsey always said of, says of Wexford, the one consistent thing about Wexford is their inconsistency. <laughs> and you're like you you're just not sure with Galway on a given day. The All Ireland semi final against Limerick last year, brilliant, like run them to the pin of their collar. Leinster final before that, you know, shocking enough at times. You know what I mean? You're just not sure what you're going to get. Yeah. Very Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah, and I, like I, I've been down at most of the Munster games. I was in uh, Ennis for the Cork Clare game. I was in Gaelic Grounds last Sunday as well for the for the Cork Limerick game. And it, the, the, in terms of the standard and the quality of the hurling that's that's going on at President Munster, look, there is there is a gap. There's no doubt about it. I think Gaul would just need um, to play them high profile games or high octane games to get the best out of them. Um, and look, probably answer my West me coming into that Dublin game. It was set up for the lads, really. Michal and Franny and Noel know the lads inside out. Um, they know them all from club as well, like you know. So it was it was set up for an ambush, um, and they nearly pulled it off. But look, we need to we need to win a Bowie Cup on, on Sunday week. 
Mm. I was going to ask you, as manager of NUIG, uh, Keane Lynch there last year, and you know he had some great performance, uh, performances for you at times. Does he look like he's right to you at the moment physically, or, or what do you think is happening? And I'm sure like you probably didn't have that much contact time with him because um, you know he had his county commitments. You probably only saw him for the matches, really. Um, yeah, look, I'd say the injuries last year um, probably hasn't fully recovered yet. Probably hasn't recovered. Sorry, my wife's after coming in. Sorry, look. No, no, one second. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like tell her I was back. Just, 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 and the Healy Rays were campaigning at the door as he had him on the, on the screen. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Could be worse. So, it could be, could be worse, yeah. <laughs> could be worse, you know. So, um, yeah, he, does, he doesn't look... He doesn't look 100%. I'd say match fitness is probably the big thing that's going against him. Um, he probably needs to get 60, 65 minutes under his belt. Um, the impact that lasted for him, I think there was one key ball at the end that he got his hands on, uh, recycled it, won it. I think the ball then, he kind of half hit or he was half hooked or blocked. And it spilled, I think, Seamus Flanagan got that, got that score to kind of give them a buffer. Um, no, he doesn't look right. I'd, I'd say, look, lads, he just needs... Um, a run of games really and, and for his injuries to stay stay off and, and for him to get his confidence levels back up look in terms of the quality he has we know the talent is there um, but look it's, it's like anything else it's, it's coming to the kind of crunch stage of championship now and I, I'd say with the lads what role does he have is it is it coming on and probably igniting the crowd or, or does he start and get 40-45 minutes out of him but I'd say look to answer your question, I just think he just needs to run the games to get his fitness levels back up and his confidence levels back up. I had heard even last week, Shane, that he rolled his ankle the Wednesday night before the game as well. So, like, there's a couple of th- like, there's a hamstring issue, there's other little, small little things. If he can get a, a clean run, and listen, sure, look at it, lads. Like, Garold Hegarty was totally out of form, he would say, before before the uh, before the Cork game and he finishes on such a big high, like, he could be a different player for the rest of the season. It might just take one game or one half for Lynch to catch fire and it could be he could offer something completely different that Limerick haven't had so far you know mm. and by the same token Jeff I'm looking at Conor Cooney and Conor Whelan and thinking they were both mm. taken off against Kilkenny both were quiet against Dublin the other day they're two lads that have been very prominent for Galway over the years and you know to get where Galway need to go mm. they're, they're going to have to start firing on all cylinders yeah look Galway's quality of play in the first half particularly Shane I didn't see the stats in it but I don't I'd say no ball went inside for the first 20 minutes uh, Whelan probably saw one ball in the first half, second half, uh, very few balls in the game. And I just think that's one part of our game that probably needs to improve is, is the type of ball that he's getting. Like, in fairness to him, any day he goes out, um, it's usually two against one in there. Um, maybe switching himself and Connor or putting the two of them inside um, and putting better body goal because our decision making and our distribution zone in particular. Um, I'm just thinking of Tom Nonan off the top of my head. Had two poor choices really when the, the ball should have gone inside to Wheelow. Um, but like, yeah, we with Gal, we're going to need the two boys in particular um, to produce their A games against Kilkenny. And if we want to have a say in the championship, we're going to need to perform it at the highest level. But I do think our quality of our play um, needs to improve in, t- in, in terms of what we're doing with the ball and, and the key parts of the game. And you would have had plenty of these younger guys coming through with Galway through your hands over the years. Is, is there any players in particular that you've seen? you know, show a bit of promise in recent times with the senior team that you would have had in the past? Yeah, look, sure, the 2015 crew there, you have Evan, you have Brian O'Cannon, you have Fintan Burke, Jack Grealish, uh, Keenan Fahey, Tom Monin. So, like, they, they've all come through, but it's taken a long, long time for them um, to, to kind of reach the, the levels that you need. I guess and see is one area, uh, and I've said it before, like, when you're charting their lads' journey in terms of their own playing career, Whatever about the physical side of it is having the mental capacity to see with the ups and downs of intercounty game, and that's the hard part for the boys. And a lot of them don't reach, I suppose, that level in terms of being able to mentally survive at this level to 24, 25, 26. And in Galway, we don't do patience well. Um, other counties do. For Kenny, you look at TJ Reid's career, even he served a long apprenticeship for before he got it. He'd probably Henry in the background, making sure he he, he does he didn't walk away from it at times. I think it's 2012 finally got taken off, um, and he was going to walk away. He came back, and I think for us we probably just need to be more patient uh, with the lads. And look, the lads have the talent. They just need they need time. Uh, they need a support structure around them. Um, I'm fortunate enough from the college that I get my hands on the boys again. Then you know for a few more years after that, and invariably with us it's it's a it's a really good learning curve for them as well in terms of fits. 
it does get them a stage then to play at another level, higher level than under 20. It's probably just below senior in the county. Can I just ask you about the Fitzgibbon, uh, Jeff? Like, to me, I said Fitzgibbon played a final against UCC in, I think it was 10 or 11. Absolutely loved the competition, loved everything about it, loved learning off Limerick lads, even even some tip lads, you might learn the odd thing off them as well. Um, but you pick up bits and pieces from different lads. And I just think more and more the competition, as good as it is to anybody that knows anything to me or anyone that's involved in it, it just seems to be more and more marginalised, more and more squeezed. Like, if you look at the Limerick, you know, the current Limerick squad, go back, you probably trace the vast majority of it back to a Fitzgibbon final between Mary I and UL that went to extra time, where I'd say the guts of 15 of them were probably involved. One of the greatest games I would have said ever played. And when I think of some of the best games ever played, they're Fitzgibbon games, but it's just getting squeezed and squeezed more. Like, and I just, I think it's a bit of a travesty, to be honest with you, because it's getting less and less importance in the GA calendar. You've been a manager at that level. What are your kind of own thoughts on that? Um, look, we've, we're fortunate that we've Henry, I suppose, at the helm, and he, he's fairly understanding and accommodating with the lads. Um, in terms of yeah, the loading side of it, it, it is heavy on the boys in, in January and February in particular. Um, what's the solution, lads? I don't know. Um, I don't know what the solution is. Like for for the status of the competition, you need the intercounty lads involved in it. Do the lads want to play a hundred percent? Do they enjoy it? Yeah, they have a perfect balance between playing matches. Having the crack going out for a few points on the Wednesday yeah, night, yeah, yeah. back into county training, and they 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 enjoy that side of it. But it is a heavy load in them, uh, in particular. Probably Evans probably struggled in the Fitz final this year as a result, you know, because he played every league game. Um, I think he was on his ninth game at that stage in six weeks when he played the Fitz final, and it was just to have the energy that he needed, and it just wasn't there. But look, Ev- Ev- fairness to Evan. Um, he's progressed on and developed himself a huge amount over the last four, five, six years. He's a key player for, for Galway now. Um, but without the fits, would he have got to the level that he needed to have? Probably not. You know, I, I haven't, I haven't got a solution for it. Um, the only thing I, 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 the only solution for me is to make sure you have a senior the county manager within your county that's accommodating, understanding of the lads' well. And like in terms of Evan Nyland, his performance in the second half the other day when Galway were really struggling. That could be a bit of a coming of age performance because you know he's plenty of doubters out there around him. Hmm. Yeah, look, but he's reached a level of consistency last for the last couple of years. Um, in, in terms of his own performance levels, he's gained Henry's trust this year. He's on the freeze. He got key scores in the second half. The last day, he nailed a critical free at the end. You know, so from from his own performance levels, he's reached that level of consistency. The big thing for him is to develop his game even further and not just be happy with what he's doing at present. He needs to be pushing on and improving, probably going after the tackle stuff, the turnovers, all that, had with his team play, linking up play. He gave a good ball back to Connor Cooney, who should have scored it at a key juncture. You know, so he knows himself in terms of, of what he needs to be doing. Um, but like it's like anything else, we, we probably need Bino himself, Connor Cooney, Connor Whelan, J.O., all these lads to be kind of fired and if we want to have a say in the championship. And uh, just in terms of the minor final this Sunday, how do you see that going? Yeah, look, um, really excited by the, by, like, you're always looking for the marquee players to be coming through, you know, and, and Young Rabbit there and obviously Evan's brother Aaron, um, they're kind of two stand-up perform, performers for the lads. I, I think it's going to be a tight game, lads. Um, the clear support will probably uh, outweigh all the support. Um, on on the day, the, the, the stands are, are completely full both sides. You know, uh, you can get tickets right in the third side of it. It's going to be a tight game. Um, it's probably going to be usual for the lads. The goal lads are probably always used to going to Crow Park, but the goal management is fairly experienced, as as is the Clare management in 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 dealing with these things. And they've good lads in both background teams. Um, but how do I see it? If 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 Clare have two backs, they're able to tie down Rabbit and Nyland. I'll say, yeah, they're going to win, but I can't see the both both of the boys being tied down on any given day. But it, it's going to be tight. Mm. How tough? Like, what do you do with a player like Aaron Island in terms of like making sure none of the outside hype gets to him at any stage? Because you know he's the most mm. hyped talent we've heard of in a long time, and you want to make sure he does come through. Yeah, look, I, I think Tom Morrissey alluded to the, to, to the stuff last Sunday, really. He, he gave no good stare, just stay off social media or <laughs> make sure when they're on Instagram or Snapchat, whatever, that they're not reading, you know, stuff coming up to a final. He's probably fortunate to have a brother that's gone through the mill. Um, he probably probably learned an awful lot from him um, and what he needs to do. 
Um, but look, with, with, with Charlotte there, like Charlotte was manager at Clenridge for the last couple of years. He's, he's got a good pedigree in, in his house, and I said they'd keep him grounded. Um, but look, it's like anything else as well with, 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 with these young lads. Some of the stuff will seep in, um, but you're just hoping on, on the day that they produce the goods. Mm. Michael? Yeah, no, he definitely is one of the most exciting players. And even just listen to an interview after Jeffrey, quite a grounded fella by all accounts, seems to be oh, like wiser than his years anyway, it's just from the words that he's using. Like, you know, when someone throws a big compliment at you telling you how great you are and he's just kind of deflecting straight away to X or Y or the management or whatever, which is a good a good sign of an, in a young fella as well. Yeah, look, and I, I suppose the last couple of weeks you're busy recruiting for the college. You're having conversation with the Offaly lads. You know, so like you're talking to the the Adams Creenies and and the Tierguinans and and the the boys they are an awfully like and they're grown at young fellas as well. But look, it all comes from the home lads. You need parents there to guide you and help you out, and your coaches uh, in particular to kind of shield you. Um, and the most biggest problem in nowadays is is is, is the social media side. that lads will get distracted. Um, they they're great in the GA world, like clapping you on the back when you're doing well, but when it's not going well. They fairly cut you, they cut you in two, and and look, these these lads just need minding, um, through schools and colleges and, and county setups, and and go, we're getting better at that. It's gas to say about social media. Um, John Milan said he always used Tony Brown as a real sounding board, and social media was get was coming in. I say towards the end of Milan's career, and he said to Brown, he says like, you know, what what do you think of this social media, Tony? Like, I'm thinking about going on it or whatever. And he says, he says, no, I don't think it's for you, John, or whatever. And he's never been on social media because just you, it is something it, like if you make a decision to kind of keep a wide berth from it, particularly during the season, it's as you say, it's great when you're going well. But I think if you're able to keep that narrow focus, um, it definitely would pr- help, probably help your career and make you probably mature a bit quicker. I'd say too. Yeah, look, so I didn't realise that someone told me, is Clifford's not on social media? Is that true? No, no, no. Yeah, so look, the, like, social media is, is, is enjoyable for all of us, but it's like that Nelson's balance. But when you're in the public domain, it's different. Um, you, your public property, I remember my first year um, as minor manager, we won it, and we were Sarah Farrell sent to me, you're no public property. And I, I learned fairly quick after a few years what that means. And you just have to get used to it, you know. You have to you have to roll, roll, roll with it. When it's going well, and then when it's not going well for you, you just have to have a, a big technique. Um, and uh, look, it, it's 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 the modern world we live in. And the big thing, I suppose, as a manager or coach, is you educate the young lads on it in particular. Um, and look, some dress rooms. I was talking to a, a mate yesterday, but he went back playing junior D hurling the mellows, and he says to me, "They're all on their phones inside in the dress room. There's no crack. There's no bit yeah. of fun, you know." And and sure, look, when we were playing. That, that's where all the, the crack was. Yeah, we landed into a pub after a junior B football match last year and there was lads going around in Crocs on their phone. I said, there's something seriously <laughs> wrong here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, I was, like, this is an awkward one, Jeff, uh, at the top of the head. Who's going to win the All-Ireland this year in senior? I, I think Limerick, because they won last week, um, you'd, you'd still have them as favourites. But... I do think there's going to be a curveball, uh, whether it comes from Clare or not. If Clare can stay injury-free, uh, because I really fancied them last year, um, if they can stay injury-free, I would go with them second. If Gaul was form improve, I'd have them third, because you're, you're always good at the power rankings, lads, in fairness. I know you're watching. <laughs> yeah, and look, it's like, a, it's like I can go on social media now, because I'm not, I'm not. I'm taking a year off from coaching and managing, so you can listen to everything. Yeah, I think I think I'd give I I put Clare up there as as a close as a close candidate really. I think the hurling that they're playing, the quality, uh, the energy to decide the county, um, and if John Conlon and them boys can say say injury free, I'd fancy them. Mm, they've already lost their full back. Tipperary have lost, God knows how many players. Yeah. This stage. So I think you'd have to rule Tip out at this stage. Here yeah. we go. Jesus yeah. Christ! <laughs> the excuse the excuses before <laughs> preliminary quarter final. Yeah. Yeah. He's taking the pressure off of Cahill and the boys. Um, yeah, look, if, if if Tip can get Jason Four back, O'Connor back, Cahill Barrett and these lads, yeah, I think they would have learned an awful lot from that Sunday. But sure, seven days later, lads, after playing Limerick, um, takes an awful lot of as, as we've seen with Clare last year. Um, but like, looking at looking at outside of that, really, like, we're, we're, who are you going to go for? Um, Kilkenny, if they get all the boys back, but they're probably weaker than they were last year with a few lads gone abroad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, Jeff, thank you very much for joining us and uh, enjoy the match on Sunday.
Thanks, lads. Okay. Cheers, Jeff. Okay, so geez, what a star of the show we had today. We're, I think we're nearly all heard out, but I do have the weekly quiz before before we finish up. That okay? Yes, you're going to yeah. catch me out badly again. Probably. Um, yeah. Three, yeah, all three hurling questions, actually, given that it's been a predominantly hurling show. So the first question is, who did John Kiley name as captain in his first year as Limerick Senior Hurling Manager? So who did John Kiley name as captain in his first year as Limerick Senior Hurling Manager? Question two. Uh, Limerick are chasing a Munster Senior Hurling Championship five in a row on Sunday week against Clare. Who are the only county to achieve that? And a bonus point for the last time said county achieved that. As in so, the final year of their five in a yeah, row? Yeah, or the, the five years. Like, if you had the final year, you'd be able to have the previous four, I presume, if you're, like, able to count. So you should be, should be able to put that together. <laughs> so Limerick are chasing the Munster Senior Hurling Championship five in a row on Sunday week against Clare. Who are the only county to achieve that? And when did they last do it? And then the last question, uh, this is a three-pronged question. Three sets of brothers, name three sets of brothers to win Hurling All-Stars. So... Three sets and there's three brothers, so it's one, two, three. So it's nine all stars all together. So three, oh, three sets, sets of brothers and three within that, if you get me. So it's like, yeah, if you it's, it's three sets of brothers and there's three of them that have won all stars. You should say that again. It's very tricky, isn't it? <laughs> I'll fly oh. through the questions again really quickly. Who did John Kiley name as captain in his first year as Limerick Senior Hurling Manager? Limerick are chasing the Munster Senior Hurling Championship five in a row on Sunday week against Clare. Who are the only county to achieve that and when did they last do it? And name three sets of brothers um, that have won Hurling All Stars. And I, the key word is three. So it's three brothers. Well, the Dooleys three, anyway. It has to be the Dooleys. Go back to number question number one first. Okay. I'm trying to think who was captain in 2017 of Limerick. And I'm wondering, it, was James Ryan still there? Bing. Correct. Well done. Wow. Yeah, very good. Well done. That was his last year. And then obviously Jim... Hannon took over. And all anyone remembers is uh, usually Hannon being captain. Question number Cork, two. Cork 86. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Cork, Cork have done it twice. So well, we had in... Jimmy Barry on. So that was the last time it True was enough. done. He retired. Hasn't been done since. Cork have done it 1901 to 1905, 1982 to 1986, and the three sets of brothers. Well, look, I'm going to call a spade a spade. Porter Porter has put up the answer here. The Fennellys and the Bonners. Is that correct? Uh, no, the Dooleys, the Bonners. Wow. Oh, a bit of debate now. I, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's the Fennellys. I think it's an, I think it's another set of Kilkenny brothers. Um. Hmm. Liam, Pat that... and John. Huh? Liam, Pat and John. Henderson? Yeah. So, geez, I, I wonder, have the, the Fennellys won? Mm. You, won't find, you won't find it easily, trust me. You won't find it in time enough anyway. Right, but, uh, I won't. I won't even try I, it in. I don't know about you, but I, I cannot wait for the, the Electric Ireland minor final. I can't wait for the under-20 final. It's going to be some, some weekend hurling, as you say, putting the two of them together. Puts them front and centre, and uh, yeah, there's going to be a great buzz around it. Down and in fairness, see, it, it is where the GAA started, so it's the it's the right location for it as well. I'm glad you said that. Uh, a reminder: we are brought to you by What's the Score? So great live score app. Make sure you download that. Keep you keep on top of all it's the. So handy, the Shane. We we we've done it in Bor now, and it basically means that. Anyone in Borough, we were coming back from a wedding in Greece last year and you could just go on what's the score because we had someone from Borough doing it and you could check the scores. Although we were beaten the same night and it's a bit a bit miserable looking at when you're losing. But it's it's such a good way to keep up on fixtures with going on within different counties at the same time. It's a it's a brilliant service. I think there's over three hundred and fifty clubs and they're launching they're launching a new product over the over the next coming coming days. So that's uh, hugely exciting as well. Yeah. Uh, also, if you want to get the audio podcast of this, use patreon.com forward slash our game. And thanks very much to Electric Ireland, who are, of course, sponsoring the minor championship. Also, if you want to do run a fundraiser, why not go email events at ourgame.ie. We'll run a fundraiser for you. We had a great fun doing one down in Rowan Moore not so long ago. Michael, who knows? We mightn't see you early next week if um, if the if, if a new a new Verney is shot forth into the world. So hopefully... <laughs> I, don't know if the, I don't know if the world is ready. Yeah, well, hopefully all goes well there. And uh, if not, 
if the baby hangs on a bit longer, sure, look, maybe we'll see you on Monday. Who knows? It's a bit of a lottery at this stage. Okay, great stuff. Thanks, folks, for joining us. And we'll see you all again next Monday, one way or another.